Hello there, everyone. Thank you so much for watching the Daisy podcast. I want to thank all of our Patreon and YouTube supporters for all of their support. It is really much appreciated. I want to thank Malinar, Ken Brown, Tank Dazza, Shane Murphy, Big Dog, Florida AF, and Eric Johnson for our Patreon supporters. Much, much appreciated and much love to you all. And I also want to give a special thank you to our YouTube members, Jake Azira Cool, OG Bricktop, T Dog, Stud Muffin, Hannah Epps, Zenith777, You My Size, Andrew Boyd, Michael, Darkwing Tate, Daisy Hub, Marson P2, Matt Z, Raymond Normoyle, King Alabar, and Kenny Baker. You are all absolutely fantastic. You are absolute legends. Thank you so much for for providing for the show and supporting us in all of our episodes. We really do appreciate it and we can't wait to see you on the next show, The Daisy Podcast. And hello, welcome everybody. New episode, finally. It's been a week. But uh, we did originally schedule this for Saturday, but thanks to Steve, we were able to push that back to a normal Friday. How's everyone doing? We doing good, good. I think. <laughs> Hello. I was just about to say, yeah, I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> we can't normally acknowledge us. <laughs> there we go, right? That's the episode, guys. No, but it's an absolute pleasure to have every one of you back on the show. It's been, we've been talking about this for quite some time and finally managed to um, pull the trigger and get this sorted out. So, but first off, before we continue on, Dump, Lemons, how are you guys doing? Um, not okay. dead. <laughs> I'm happy that we were able to move the show to today because uh, I think, uh, yeah, Sunday's my anniversary. My wife wants to go do things Saturday, so, you know. Fair enough. Lucky man. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. So, expansion. It's a mod. <laughs> no, but. So, Steve... I've I've always kind of wondered because you know expansion has been one of those kind of like staple mods that has been out for quite some time now. Where did the idea come from? It's assuming it was obviously yourself that created it, and who else did you create it initially with? Oh, that's a very interesting question. Like mm. the, the first initial idea with expansion came with. Uh, Arma 3 and, and the possibilities of modding Arma 3 back in the days. Mm -hmm. uh, I was very active back in the days in the Exile uh, mod community and made pretty much, uh, yeah, like customizations, stuff mm -hmm. like that, like dynamic missions. And I made a system where you can like interact with map objects and get loot from them, like really small shit back yeah. in the days and then with daisy modding in 2018 uh things got a bit interesting in <laughs> just a bit there and a bit <laughs> yeah and i mean that the complete new and different language uh that that we got with daisy and infusion uh was something that I was really hooked into and got me quite interested. And mm -hmm. so I just randomly started something out of nowhere with small uh, little, yeah, play arounds, basically. And uh, soon I got a few people that messaged me and were like, hey, bro, can I join you and, and play around with you with the project? And that was the beginning of pension, basically. Mm -hmm. So th these people were back in the days: Jacob Mango, yeah. uh, Movex, who is no uh, not long longer a member of the uh, team, mm -hmm. and a few other people like uh, Dance of Jesus, uh, Not a Banana, who's also pretty known in the community. Yeah. Uh, then soon um war dog joined us <clears throat> and 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 we yeah we got a pretty big team over time and things evolved and and, and we were, were just passionate people that wanted to create stuff for this game and for the community like stuff that that was missing in the base game mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and that we want it back in the game because we we uh, had it back in the mod days where yeah. where the Z mod was a thing or the Z epoch or the, or just the, all that Arma three mods, uh, viral mods came out like Arma three epoch exile uh or what was it called uh breaking point stuff oh, like yes. that oh yes yeah and, and that was basically the 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 whole exp uh, the the whole um yeah how the can whole I say that yeah <laughs> the the true origin story of expansion just teat it over All and right. just kind of slowly built over it and that that's absolutely fantastic so i, w I want to go kind of like one by one because there's a cup there's um you know obviously liquid and uh, how do you uh, pronounce your uh username jose jose okay nice <laughs> so i kind of i kind of want to talk about you guys as well so um so jose what's uh what's your role in expansion um, memes, according to Literate Master. <laughs> nice! Excellent! <laughs> Fantastic! Memes are important. The, <laughs> yeah. the no, my, my role of the universe. <laughs> yeah, my role basically is to mostly uh, do support to users, hosters. That's where I basically um, started helping mm -hmm. all the team. I was a user, just like anyone else. And one day, basically, I decided to start modding because I was bored with the game and such. And fast forward a little bit, I uh, focus mm -hmm. mostly on vehicles and porting items that I feel are needed to basically complete some of the features that are an expansion, right. like some stuff, for example, ATMs for market mm -hmm. or some vehicle in particular that, that I feel it fits the, the whole vehicle pack that expansion has. Um, I mostly focus on that and particularly love helicopters. So. I've been working a lot on them, oh, and nice. and I think I'm gonna start working on other things. I kind of want to do some random items, like I don't know, some clothing, um, base building, and oh, nice. and such. So basically, my my job is to work with models and and help on whatever I can. Basically. Right. Okay, that's that is actually fairly pretty <laughs> interesting. So, what would you say would be like the most how would you say the most difficult part um, that you've worked on that you've kind of like overcame and you're really proud of when it, when it comes to expansion? Oh, when it comes to expansion? Mm -hmm. I, um, I don't know. It's, it's just such a gigantic mod. It's so complicated to understand mm -hmm. for someone who, uh, like many of us, was self-thought basically in the, in, in the modding ways. Um, but I don't know. For, for now, I think the... the the vehicles, the whole package as vehicles themselves, um, the, the whole simulation model for, for helicopters in particular and, mm -hmm. and what we can do with them on, on, as, a, as a mod, as a single package, uh, I, I think it's fantastic. I, I haven't worked on the scripting side of things, yeah. but the, seeing it there as a tool, basically, uh, as something that you can build upon, it, it's fantastic. Like... I had so many ideas with so many random vehicles, thanks to what has been done with expansion. And hopefully, the uh, coming simulation update it's not going to break everything. But yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was, yeah, I was <laughs> going to ask on on that. So, um, just as a quick question for the entire team, with obviously one nineteen coming right around the corner, what kind of steps are you guys going to be taking to make sure that there's a smooth transition to one nineteen? Obviously, with the vehicle physics being updated to what is current infusion, how 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 are you guys feeling about that? Are you are you, are you ready for it, or are you like shit? <laughs> I think we need to pray a lot. <laughs> yes. Oh, justice. Yes, I know that much. <laughs> I, I am. I'm. I'm worried about that. Not much that we can say at this point because um, yeah. we need access to the experimental mods, and then we can look at it. Mm -hmm. It's even contained in 1.19. It's another question. Yes. If it's maybe the next update, we don't know yet. But let's see. Yeah, because because they have said that if there's no like major hurdles, it will be coming in 119, If I remember rightly from the stream. So yeah. Um, I I'm obviously as the end end user, I'm really excited for it. But 
obviously expansion is quite known for the helicopters and the vehicles that they've worked on so i've always been kind of interested how you how you will tackle i know people they they go straight to the experimental build and they tinker and make it work but not all modders are like that I, i'm not <laughs> so that you think i got that time no <laughs> this it is quite tough uh a topic actually because uh, you have to imagine that the first guy and uh, main guy who worked on the main helicopter simulation was mm -hmm. Jacob Mango. Yeah. And I have no doubt that uh, a guy like Liqu Liquid Rock could figure it out and, and work into it. But we mm -hmm. have no idea what what they are actually changing yet. So Absolutely. if everything like go, goes fucking worse and, and nothing works uh, as before or can just throw the whole uh yeah like helicopter simulation in the in the trash bin yeah then we have quite a big problem and <laughs> oh, yes. would need to start from scratch what mm -hmm. would make that quite impossible because i don't know we we don't have really the manpower anymore right mm -hmm. now to to get things uh in order to that direction, I, yeah. I'm I'm quite quite open here right now because that that's a topic that is is really hard. But if if it's not so worse, we can surely figure it out. And if Jacob Mango can can still somehow participate on that, but Come back, uh, please. That, Come that, back. that that that's that's another question because Absolutely. he's quite busy with with his own job now. Yeah. Uh, yeah that, don't want to go to details because no. I don't know if I can talk about that. But no, yeah. No, that's fine. <clears throat> it, that's it's, something. it's something we also looking uh, with uh, big hopes and uh, uh, at basically. But yeah, we can't say now mm -hmm. what will come. And it's important to remember that this is going to affect everyone, not just expansion. Yes. So mostly, so users keep that in mind because a lot of people are going to have issues and having to find a new way to 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 bring back all the content that was working up until that point. So just be practice patience uh, with everyone yes. because it's going to be uh, it's going to be a, a, a really difficult time for everyone. Oh, it absolutely will best, be. Absolutely. Best suggestion for big server hosts we could do, I think, because it quite it helps quite a lot the mothers and authors of the mods. If you can do that and exper experimental drops, make sure you do a test environment with with uh, with the mods you you run on your live server on Sable right now, and try maybe to. Give the modders feedback if you really run into issues with the vehicle stand. Absolutely, yes. Uh, we don't know if it will work out of the box when, when the experimental update drops and if you will experience, uh, experience any issues at all. But yeah, that that is something that is always good if you can provide feedback about the issues. Because, yeah, sure, we can also test stuff, but the mass can always figure out more than a single yeah, guy, basically. Well, that, well, that's it. Yeah, there needs to be quite a lot of communication between several owners and yeah. modders to make sure that um, the transition does go smoothly, especially for the bit larger projects like expansion. Um, I think I, it helps a lot. Yeah. It, it does, yeah. And I know Dump has, um, has that as well. You know, he communicates, as far as I'm aware, communicates with... Um, his community about upcoming mods and updates and what like that. So, best thing to do. Unless I'm talking at my ass, dumb. I don't know. <laughs> no, I tell all my community go away. I'm just kidding. No, no. Uh, Steve is very much right. Uh, I would say you know a good portion of people actually modders fixing bug reports is the community reporting them. So if something major like Steve says the a vehicle physics update drops and you don't at least experiment yourself as server owners, Steve and them probably will never know the extent of the bugs that are going to happen because you yeah. just can't see them all with all the different variations of combinations of mods and or configurations. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. 
so Liquid Rock, I want to talk a bit about yourself. We touched on that, you, you know, yourself with the helicopters. So what's your role in the expansion team? Mostly fixing things, actually. That's nice. actually why I joined the team. Um, I remember in 2020, um, it was end of the year, I think, uh, Lieutenant Master contacted me and asked if I wanted to join. I said, sure, why not? Why <laughs> not? That... <laughs> but you uh, made a please, huge uh, mistake with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can say that. <laughs> Um, actually, previously I uh, had already uh, an unofficial uh, fixes mod for expansion going, so that's how I got involved with expansion before ah, I joined the team. Right. So, okay. Yeah. Mostly yeah, fixes, like the, the cone base, um, new features here and there, AI stuff lately this year. Mm -hmm. It. He brings us out very short, but. He uh, made the initial uh, sequences basically for the whole splitting of the mods. Yes, like, I was actually oh, going nice. to ask about that because yeah, when expansion came out, um, it was just it was essentially like one large package, which is which is great. But um, obviously that caused issues with some servers, which is understandable. But it was nice to see that over time you did take the decision to split it up. So if you know, so everyone has wanted one part, they could just have that. And if they didn't want the others, that was great. So what kind of what kind of stemmed, or I guess you could say, since you decided at first everything's going to be in one package, what kind of made you decide actually this is going to be the best route? For me, it was actually always the case that I thought uh, splitting the mods, even if it wasn't just uh, the mods split it, but just the code base would be easier for us because it would mm -hmm. be better organized, better, better to work with, easier to work with. And that's actually helped us quite a bit, I think, just from a code perspective, uh, having everything split. And then the splitting into the several uh, different mods is mm -hmm. practically an added bonus, I would say. But it's also easier to use certain features when you're not interested in the whole package and just want one thing or two, or two things like mm -hmm. base building and notifications, for example, or something like that. Yeah. So uh, it made a lot of sense in the end, I think. And, and did it take much convincing to... To, to do that, or um, was it just like... Initially, initially um, there was a bit of resistance, I think, but not from from, from team inside, because uh, at first we didn't want to split, and then mm -hmm. we made, actually, wholeheartedly, the whole team made a decision to split the mods, so there was not not actually <laughs> that much of, of, of a resistance to work against. <laughs> well, there you go, uh, not bad. Yeah. yeah that's, that's pretty that's awesome. Pretty I just want to say that Lieutenant Master, hello, he is in chat. He's just said, while I was fixing expansion, nice. Liquid Rock was at the start of splitting and adding content. Yeah, that's true. And hello. So, n nice nice to, nice to see you in chat. He was the main guy who started fixing, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so. With... Uh, go on, yeah. go on. Sorry. No, sorry. I don't want to interrupt <laughs> you. Okay, so obviously with expansion, you know, growing over the years, adding more content, do you feel like expansion has led to where you expected it to be, or did it completely like surpass all of your expectations? Yes, uh, everything. It, it surpassed everything. Like, I never expected to be part of such a very, very big community and such an awesome team. Mm -hmm. uh, have like such passionate and 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 very uh, yeah I don't know very I don't these guys are my right and left arms basically without <laughs> them I am nothing oh, and without nice. them expansion is nothing and every everyone that was involved to this project made so uh brought so much into it mm -hmm. with with uh, not only his mind and and uh his heart blood basically but also with uh, with uh yeah the the project always in mind with the community in mind and that's something i don't know that the community uh can really appreciate i think that mm -hmm. everyone in this team uh tries always to to uh yeah make things 
to uh, fitting to 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 the community basically. So <laughs> if they have any kind of suggestions and and throw it in, we we all, most likely make sure it gets integrated in some way if we can. And mm -hmm. that's something I I'm 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 kind of yeah. It blows my mind sometimes, especially if someone like like Liquid Rock uh, takes stuff in his hands. I I can I don't know. It, it, it's quite interesting how the mod mm -hmm. evolved the past years, just because mm -hmm. of of the way ways things got handled by people like Liquid Rock or Jose or Lieutenant Master. Yeah. It, it's insane. Like, it is, it is I, I couldn't do that by my own. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah. that's that's the thing. It is, it's... Of... <laughs> but it's it it is really nice to see like how expansion has evolved since it's you know it's um, since it coming out on Steam. I still remember when it came out, and it was it was a fairly interesting launch. And, you know, over time, you know, the more servers that got to use it adapted to the features and those features evolved. And people's come and gone from the team. So would, so how many people actually actively work on expansion now? Hmm. Good question. <laughs> I would say right now it's four to five people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and how idea. many people were working on it when it first hit um, the workshop? I think on our peak times we were like eight people in the team. Mm -hmm. If I'm not lying now, but I I would have to really think about go it. deep back in, into the repository and mm -hmm. dig out the the the, the co contributors and timelines. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's it's quite interesting how many people uh, left joined the team, and we still even have people in the team who has not contributed a single line of code yet or or any kind of content, but they they kind of learn from us. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> uh, at least, no at, idea. At least, They're just there. <laughs> at, at least they have uh, 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 some idea what we are doing. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, it, that's it, something. It, it, yeah, and that's something. But yeah, it, it it's it's quite an history we had in the past years with mm -hmm. with people joining and leaving our team. But all <laughs> always in uh, in in yeah, let's say good mm -hmm. manner. Absolutely, and. That's good. And do you usually have like um, obviously with expansion with its size and its popularity, have you had quite a lot of people like come to you like, oh, can you help me with this? Like, how how open are you to helping other people learn from seeing you know what you guys are doing? It's like, oh, I, I want to try something like this. I want to try what they do a base building or with the ATMs or you know the trade and anything like that. Um. So we have an open. Discord basically with mm -hmm. a lot of channels and help sections. If we, uh, if the question is related to expansion, most mm -hmm. likely that's the case. Yeah. Uh, the community and also we tr always try to help for sure, but not everyone gets always an answer. It's quite difficult to help everybody in the Discord. Mm -hmm. But if if the essential question can can be answered by our wiki someone in the community will most likely throw the wiki link on them and it, the question is solved <laughs> uh, we we get that quite a lot of people are kind of overwhelmed by expansion when they first yes. experience it because i was <laughs> so shit. much stuff uh on, and and throws it at you and you can customize everything basically on it, mm -hmm. and it's not for someone that basically get, gets into DayZ uh, server hosting and and wants to throw a mod on his server and it's like 
yeah, okay, I run expansion now. It that's not not no basically for a beginner level. Yeah, it's not a well. We play. yeah, it, it's not a, a basic. Okay, you can do it if you do it right. Yes, it, but it's you're still. Complex. Yeah, you still still should have a basic idea how how they see server hosting works, yeah. and as soon yeah. as it comes to to the customizations of the mod content, it gets very complex. Absolutely. Soon if you're not used to it, I mean, being as like the end of user of expansion, you can already kind of see how complex the systems pretty much are, and and, and with that, what kind of I noticed, I think it wasn't too long ago that you've released a new update uh, to expansion. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is there anything that you can kind of show us with that update or anything that you've got in the pipeline that you, you kind of want to show off or want to tease at the very least? I think we have a lot to show. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> um, I actually wanted to talk about... Uh... But last last question to you guys before you show that off. Yeah, sure. Uh, about your guys' responses to communities and stuff. Uh, I actually personally reached out expansion not too long ago, uh, Steve, actually. Mm. And I was having a problem with their mod and my mod working together. Mm. And they actually took the time to actually go through it with me and actually help me. So their responses to me as a modder, uh, even you know being who I am, uh, was just amazingly overwhelmingly um, good. So I can speak to that on their behalf. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thanks. I mean, to expand on what you just said, that's how I joined the team, basically. When I was <laughs> working on my first mod, uh, which was the insanity of every single helicopter from Arma 2 in a single mod, um, I was basically figuring out everything because yeah. no one made something like that before. And I was here, here I am alone trying to make a mod for expansion. People thought that I was crazy, but yeah. Um, and Lieutenant Master was a, a huge support on the idea and helped me find my way in, in the insanity of expansion code to learn how to do everything. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it, it helped. It also helped that basically all the assets from Arma 2 are usable by everyone. So yeah. that was a, a huge advantage. So I was basically comparing everything and, and trying to get it working. And uh, Lieutenant Master Definitely helped me a lot. To, uh, uh, Lieutenant Master. <laughs> Lava also helped me um, with some questions about the spray gun system, I, I remember. But yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah, we're always open to, to help people uh, either to create content for expansion or, or, or to expand expansion yeah. um, or even just to use it, right? Um, it's always difficult for a new user. It, it's always something that I, I always think about. It's, it's such a perfect package and ecosystem with basically all the average features that most servers have, but yeah. it's so difficult to use for a new, completely new user, right? Yeah. And it's such a conflicting thing because it, it's basically custom made for someone like that to make it easier for them. So it's, it's, always, it's always something that I keep in mind when, when answering questions and such and linking the holy text, uh, which is the wiki and, yes. and, and, and stuff. <laughs> Praise yeah. the wiki. Oh. <laughs> Praise the wiki, yeah. Uh, yeah. There's yeah, actually so a cult now. <laughs> oh my god, a cult. But going back to the last question about your guys' uh, future plans and stuff, my bad. <laughs> no, it's fine, it's fine. It's, it's all right. Um, can I tell them about something or not? Oh my god, feel free gosh. to do it. The thing I was Go working on. on. I, I mean, I, I, I cannot show I cannot show it. That's the problem. But um, I've been working on base building, on expanding right. base building, which is something that I've been saying and posting on, on the Discord <laughs> for a while now. It's been something that has been um, shelved for a lot of time. Um, but I can confirm that I've been working on it. And, and I'm mainly working on it. And I will try to make it happen. But okay. we'll see how feasible it is to and sustainable uh, it is in the long run. But uh, that update needs to happen, and and and, and I'm basically working on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know very what nice. Steve wants to tease. <laughs> Super vague, but very nice. Yes. <laughs> no, I, I am actually really excited for that, um, and and I can only assume that a lot of other people would. 
are you able to tell me a little bit more about the details of of that or are you just going to be base like, building yeah um, like, or well, are you just going to be like i had a lot of ideas for it um okay basically checking on on the other mods on what basically is standard by the community uh, mm -hmm. by now for users for the most part and also going back to uh, the the roots of the idea of expansion, which is taking a lot of inspiration from the old Arma 2 mods like Epoch, yeah. Origins, um, Breaking Point and Arma 3 and such. And it, it's fascinating how we're basically there in, when it comes to features on, on, the, on the models and how you build the base and such. So basically to innovate on that, it's basically trying to figure out a way to balance it and design it from a gameplay standpoint like how do you gather resources for example mm -hmm. which resources and how do you manage the base itself like adding features to that and of course expand uh, the tiers like we have a base wooden tier but also mm -hmm. have a wooden and and reinforced with metal or even a complete cement tier and yeah. stuff like that but it's i always think about okay i can add two tiers to, to the current base building, but how do we make it different? What's the expansion touch to it? And yeah. that's the kind of stuff that I've been mostly trying to think about because it's going to require collaboration from the team and I want to make sure that their time is well spent. Yeah, so, of course. Uh, I'm, I'm always thinking about features like that. Uh, base Building Plus, which is the, the staple mod basically that has been used so far, Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of inspiration from Rust, the game Rust. Right. I yeah. particularly don't like the game, but um, I can see why the base building mechanics are so appealing in the game. Mm -hmm. And I've been recently checking out a lot of that stuff. Um, but yeah, it, it's kind of going back to those type of mechanics. Someone suggested a few days ago um, the idea of having your territory being taxed in some way that you need to invest resources to basically manage it or expand it. Uh, that's something that I basically had uh, on my notes, okay. but uh, we'll see how to make it happen. That kind of stuff is, is super interesting to me. So, uh, because it, it adds a twist, it expands on the current known mechanics that, that we all been used to. Uh, but okay. yeah, that, that kind of stuff, it's, it's something that I've been currently planning in the planning phase where everything can happen. Yeah. <laughs> well that's it yeah I mean, you know you're talking about you know with with you know the tax you know with with the land my inner british is like you know cheering right now you gotta tax everything <laughs> why not you know but uh, uh. <laughs> but that's that that's a pretty interesting um that's a pretty interesting idea um you know it's it's always got to have personally in my in my opinion you know it's all well and good to build the base but you know once you've built the base, what is the, can you really do? What, what kind of other systems can you have in place to keep, keep it going, you know, and just keep, yeah, it... keep the player engaged. Exactly. Basically. Because, you know, with DayZ vanilla, there's no quote unquote end game. There's no like final goal. It's just your goal is whatever the hell you decide to do with that particular life. Whereas, you know, with expansion, you know, you've, you've got your baseball and where it's just like, you know, you've got all of this kind of stuff here. Uh, you got your base building, right? You built your base. You got your group. Okay, what next? So it's always yeah. good that you're always thinking ahead of trying to f come up with systems for that. So props to you for that. I'm 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 excited to see. Oh, there, there's there's a lot of systems comes. now in expansion that mm -hmm. add to that, to expanding and and even modifying the current uh, end game or or the progression curve of of the player. Basically, like you mm -hmm. said, like you spawn, you die. You loot and then you die and you spawn again. But yeah. How can you make it more complex or more engaging? And yeah. uh, Steve basically did a fantastic job on the quest mod uh, for yes. expansion, which yes. a lot of people are using exactly for that reason. And it's something that basically can be expanded into those ideas, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. See, I've, I've always kind of, um, when it's come to quest systems, obviously, you know, a lot of games feature quest systems these days you know just have to look at any bethesda game at this point and there you go fantastic great great template to work on but how do you make it work effectively for DayZ? because obviously with its nature i would have assumed that was actually quite difficult 
Huh. <laughs> it, was the, it was difficult. It was a very, very uh, insane process over a month, and and I I never ex expected it to have it that way. That way, it's mm -hmm. right now, and you have to imagine I always had like this this typical MMO quest system in mind yeah. in Daisy, where you get to a uh, to a certain NPC or object like quest board and get your tasks from there mm -hmm. and from there you can evolve from that and it was quite hard to to get an let's say quest system done that was not only working for DayZ but also customizable mm -hmm. in a very I think easy way based on just configuration files and that it is the quite insane thing on on the whole system and if you are f familiar with world of warcraft you will like see a lot of similarities with mm -hmm. the, the the possibilities this quest system has yeah and it gives you like uh basic uh objective and and uh quest types that you can configure and achieve with that that you basically also know from these mmo games like world of warcraft yeah uh, uh before i i talk deeper about it i will just share my screen now absolutely and hope this works and we might can take a look at the stuff in game. Uh, let me quickly, guys. I don't hear any audio. Don't hear any audio. Okay. <laughs> See. That that's that, my that, fault. That, 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 yeah, that, there we go. Ah. All right. Maybe that's better. All right. So the basic idea of the quest system is you have always a kind of uh, quest giver or certain object that heads out the quest. Mm -hmm. But you can also do like out of quest uh, with that, with that uh, new system. And that will basically, every time uh, a new player joins your server, it adds these auto quest to that character and he mm -hmm. will be able to uh do that quest which is right now this weird uh welcome to hell quest i have here which basically just leads me to the trader camp right uh on the map here which is namals if you yes. don't realize it yet oh no no you and... can pretty much tell it's namalsk <laughs> yeah steve yeah. likes namalsk i like <laughs> don't him. Yeah. don't blame him. don't blame him. <laughs> <laughs> uh we have a weird bug with the right now it's i don't know pretty random they don't want to help hold their hands sometimes uh hold their weapon in their hands sometimes hmm. uh we still try <laughs> to figure out why it's basically a vanilla daisy bug with the animation state right i don't know exactly liquid rock you know exactly what it was right don't know exactly what it is, but I know it happened after 1.18 update, which was really annoying because I had fixed up the AI quite nicely after 1.17 and then 1.18 happened and it broke. <laughs> At least yeah. this part of the AI. They saw you did it. They wanted to get you. Well, that, yeah, yeah. well, that's Probably. it. They need to keep you busy. I mean, hello. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> Somehow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the basic idea is the NPC can head out a bunch of quests. In this case, we have prepared a bunch of yeah templates mm. for certain uh, quest types with different objectives, what is possible. So you can take them over, make your own quest with you, your own kind of story behind it. So right now I will just take in this quest this guy wants me basically to to deliver a note 
to a certain other location which is now marked on my map and I have the note now in my inventory. As soon as I... Oh, there's some notes on the floor, but we don't mind them. <laughs> Bloody players uh, dropping stuff litter and god damn it, man. <laughs> that, that's from, from basically testing. Yes. Got saved here. <laughs> but yeah, basically if you take out the note now and try to get to the uh, NPC, and now I don't know which one was my note. I hope this one is right. But they just take, just them, take all. them all. Take them all, reap the rewards. <laughs> we will see. So you get the idea. So you have to deliver the note now to the sort other location. We just use cheats for this certain. No, say. <laughs> uh, showcase right now. Mm -hmm. All right. And as soon as I hit basically the objective area, you can see my quest got a different color and got flagged as completed. Yes. But if I get rid of the right node now, which is probably not this. Hello? So you always have to basically keep the quest item in this case with you. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you can't complete the quest. You have you see it the color has changed. I can't get here. He says, What do you want? I'm busy. Uh take all my notes again so I get the right one. And now we get it here and complete the quest. Yeah. And this is part of a quest chain here now. So he displays me immediately the next quest I can do from the certain NPC. And this mm -hmm. is stuff you can configure within the uh, whole yeah, quest yeah. configuration. I was, I was just about to ask that because obviously with this quest system it seems, well, obviously it's very complex, but how is it? E how easy is it to just go in and just completely make your own quest line up from scratch to kind of like fit the mood of your server because there's there's many different types of servers out there and you know people will have different ideas of what quests can um can happen yeah so uh it's all based on like you can imagine everything in expansion json file mm -hmm. so you have different parameters that you have to adjust and uh different objective types that you can at the end configure uh but sure you have certain limitations yeah and but based on on what we give you so the possibilities all can be configured just based on these files right. and our wiki gives you every th single detail about these parameters if you're interested in that and uh, we also have, uh, like I said, these template files that give you quite a, a good idea how things have to build, get built up so mm -hmm. your quest get, uh, works uh, as intended. Right. The hardest part is to be actually creative with the quest themselves. Like yeah. you want to create a storyline and uh, a variety of objectives and, and such. Like the mm -hmm. system is super simple to use, but it's all up to your imagination, basically, and what mm -hmm. you can do with it. But so it gives, it gives, yeah, sorry. I was So I was going to ask, so did you yourself create all these kind of like, you know, basic quests or did you as a team kind of come together and figure out, right, what quests would be would be good for Chinaris, for example, or good for Namask or whatever, um, if that is indeed how it's initially set up? How how did you come up with the actual quests that you've got in expansion natively? Uh, basically, just on the the yeah objective types we have, <laughs> I try to to create a quest for every single scenario so you have like this this delivery type we just did mm -hmm. and next we would have like a target type which is you have to kill a certain entity 
Mm -hmm. uh, which brings a lot of possibilities. Like you could flag a player with that, like make it a PvP quest. You can right. flag an animal with that. So the player has to hunt a certain animal. And you could even go deeper and flag that and 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 basically add conditions to that that mm -hmm. he has to do that with a certain weapon type or certain weapon. So right. uh, okay. he has to do it with a sledgehammer in this case. If I would accept this quest and start killing the infected that I would have to do for this quest now uh, with a different weapon than sledgehammer it, the yeah. quest gave me now, then I would not get any progress now. Right. West, okay. So it would not count any kill. But as soon as I use the sledgehammer, it would allow me to progress through the quest. So this is all stuff you could do and uh, it's just optional. But it gives you so many possibilities. Could also just use the quest to, to make a kind of, uh, let's say, token system. Uh, let's get the peop uh, let the player, um, I don't know, get on a certain location in 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 a special chest, an an uh, unique item item that is just uh, in this chest, mm -hmm. and he can head in special uh, uh, head in a quest for this item, uh, and get a special reward for them. For example, this is right. all stuff you can can do. Like, uh, -huh. uh, or, or, yeah, it, it, it's quite interesting. So the, the types, so objective types control how these, uh, quests act and, and how you can progress through the, them. And you can also combine certain objective types, uh, which means you, you can even go deeper, uh, yeah, into into the whole quest customization. Mm -hmm. So what I could do is a treasure hunt, for example, is a quest where the player has to find a certain location where a treasure chest is buried and he right. has to, to uh, dig it out. And within this chest, there could be an other quest item that he needs needs, for example, a collection quest and then mm. he can turn in the quest for his reward. Right. Yeah, it, okay. it, it's 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 quite complex how deep it, you can go. It certainly does seem that way. So what one idea for a quest I had, and I'm pretty sure you kind of touched on the idea. So say, for example, like you have a quest giver, which is a bounty hunter. And the way that they work is that a player huh. is chosen at random that has gotten a certain amount of kills on a server and the bounty hunter is like right this guy's causing an issue if you kill this guy and bring back his tags or something like that we'll give you x is that something that's actually possible with expansion like completely right now no uh hmm. it, it's it, it, it i know it's, not, it's quite not exactly that way yeah but you can basically turn that quest into something like uh kill a player that has a dog tag of certain rank, for example, right. and bring back that dog tag, and and you okay. can go and, and, and complete it. Or, but not or, exactly yeah. in, in the idea of a bounty, like like you were saying. Mm -hmm. I, I thought about something like that that should have been done, but I can feel a lot of issues coming with that, the, like the people, would, players yeah, exploiting yeah. it in some way. Yeah, I mean that's I, that's I the thing. Question. Go on. Yeah. Uh Steve, do you think that this could eventually lead to expansion making a player-based like message or fulfillment board? People putting up things, hey, I want this to be done, or I need this, or whatever, and people being able to like create requests and fulfill them. Oh my God, it, it's hard because we <laughs> don't really have the manpower. I mean, if <laughs> someone would come around to me and ask if I could do a third task for him, especially if it's pension evolved, like do do me a favor and create this certain quest if possible, uh, then I I surely would try to help him in some way, but 
yeah. is always depending on time, you know. We well, we oh, definitely. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm a busy man also with my real life work and all of my spare time. Uh, I, I try to get involved into the project, but yeah, it, it, it's it's not hard. everyone can can always uh, spend the time that is actually needed to mm -hmm. to oh, fulfill definitely. all requests. It's kind of hard. Yeah. But well, yeah. I, I think if you don't put in my request, you, you're an asshole. So do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh so. no, I was talking about like in the game like the, uh like players trading with players kind of situation okay my bad yeah i i thought about ah. something like that for market actually um okay when, when, it's the yeah, same I idea that, that i had with market okay i got it now so basically <laughs> no, 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 what, you're fine. i did order what, well. what you said dump graph is basically a, a way or say for example a specific npc where players can go and post a quest or bounty for other players to basically pick up and complete. Mm -hmm. That's the idea exactly. that you were proposing. Uh, it's a cool idea, definitely. But how possible? That's up to Steve, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, definitely. That's fair enough. L Lemons, you've been awfully quiet. What, what do you think about all of this? I mean, I know you're mainly like the console guy. I was about to say, um, yeah. <laughs> expansion console win? Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> if only that would be that. That would be really cool. That would be really really cool. See, one interesting question. Um, I know this is mainly based around this, uh, like um, a Daisy PC mod, but on console edition, a lot of people predominantly use Discord bots to use quests and kill feeds and stuff like that. In the future, do you guys think you could ever do um, a Daisy expansion based Discord bot? For a console service to give some sort of functionality similar? We don't have really Discord. I mean, a programmers that really are familiar with the Discord API, I think. I, well, maybe Wardog could figure something out, but uh, he is really uh, busy with his own shit, yeah. I guess. And yeah. uh, I don't. To be fair, I, 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 I don't really think I can do that. Just to be transparent here. That's fair enough. Not with that attitude, Iraq. though. To be fair, not with that attitude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello there, Raf. <clears throat> it's kind of sad, uh, but yeah. I start doing the show when I'm about to go to work. Curse is on you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, <but. laughs> no, but you know, it's it, it is good that um. That obviously, you know, lemons. You know, to me, it's a fairly good question. But if you don't have the manpower, if you don't have, like, I guess, say, like a rough idea on how to do it, and, and if you, you know, it's it's good that you can firmly say, I don't know, which is something that I think a lot of people in the community might struggle to do. Um, you know, people's people's just say, oh yeah, I know how to do X, Y, Z, and then it turns out, uh, no. <laughs> I don't so and it, it, I, I think it also you know there's a lot of um discord bots out there um that do serve the console community quite decently um and going on top of lemons's question has there been any discussion for any kinds of console related stuff not only just in like in terms of bots but maybe support or well obviously in your own time with your own individual projects is this something that you've kind of figured on? Um, maybe a help of like server owners or, again, bots and whatever else? Obviously, Discord um, console doesn't have modding per se, but maybe there's something. Unless mm. I'm just talking out my ass. <laughs> again. No, in, in my case, no. Like, mm -hmm. on, on my personal projects or ideas, no, because sadly, uh, there's no proper modding on console. Yeah, uh, I've helped a lot of, of of owners and and players basically that are interested in in, in the mission file modding basically side yeah. of things. Um, I actually rely heavily on on a console based Discord because it's the biggest database out there of of everything mission file related. But sadly, there's not a lot that we can do uh, mm -hmm. on, on on console. 
uh, beyond I don't know designing some custom mapping for them to use or stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, there, there's nothing else to do. Which is sadly. a shame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a huge shame. And even how it is now, there's still amazing things being done. Like as I've spoken about before on the podcast, one of the people who works on a experimental Discord kill feed bot has been putting together a trading system where players can buy and sell things through the Discord, and every server restart, the items will spawn at a campfire that the player has placed. Oh, that's it. Wow. Wow, okay. Holy that's Christ. creative. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. When there's limitations, you got to get creative. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that, and that's, that's, that's the best what I thing appreciate about, about the console about community, console. if you ask me. Mm, oh, 100%. Absolutely is. It's the best thing. Like, if you were told me that 10 years ago when I was playing Arma 2 Daisy Mod, if you were told me that people were playing this game on console and actually having a good time and communities and such, I would have called you crazy because there, it, it was something <laughs> that basically didn't fit my brain at that time. Like, there's no way people are going to play this on console. 10 years later, here we are. Begging for yeah. more. <laughs> yeah, what the hell? <laughs> you know, and it's it's really is quite an interesting thing because what they do is they're using log files, but they're also allowing the bot to access the nitrato. And what the bot can do is it can actually add and remove lines of code to the mission files. So you can do pretty interesting things like create King of the Hill events where it will take the position and radi radius of a um, flag and use that based on where player location is to create actual King of the Hill events. <laughs> wow so no it's it's so definitely cool. been it's come by so fast and we've just been able to achieve so many great things and i feel like that's why it'd be so cool to see you guys try and hit, do something similar to that because it's it's very difficult and it's like it's not an easy thing to accomplish but when accomplished correctly it can bring a lot of new experiences to the console community and i think that's a big thing that people are looking for right now Kind of hard because I, I I personally have no idea what is actually possible mm -hmm. right now. Uh, if I I would look into it and uh, I don't even own a console, would make <laughs> things even <Same>. difficult. <laughs> so it, it's kind of hard, even from the hardware. Perspective and all of this my, without, in my without case. Being, being able to access the init.c, right? Because on console, mm -hmm. there's no way yes. to edit it. That's insane, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One day, though, they'll, they'll get that. They'll get the init.c. It, it would be Hopefully. insane. Like, I, I would be so happy and so glad if we could just give some kind of content to, to the console community. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, I think they have we... to because they've been releasing the uh, JSON files, which, although aren't fully the init C, are still giving us more freedom and flexibility for what we can do. Yeah, yeah. I think the only way to to experience the same content as PC will be Arma Four, when yeah. that ever happens, yeah. and when mods and survival mods are a thing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Too right. So I'm 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 just even away from the console discussion. I'm looking at this weapons trader, and yeah. I've never I've never managed to have like a full in depth test while well, like try of this market. And I'm pretty sure this is quite different from what you've had previously. And I I don't know how long you've had this iteration in for. So are you able to talk a little bit about that as well? Oh the. The current iteration of the market is actually a thing for a very long time now. Like, right? I've been uh, <laughs> We 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 always still uh, do adjustments and fixes on it based on uh, feedback we still receive because it, mm -hmm. it it's quite interesting how items and uh, yeah some items in daisy behave and uh, are handled for example i don't know take consumables take magazines take bullets they are all somehow different configured and and handled in daisy um and we 
I think we are on a state now where we can say, okay, the market is complete fine. Mm -hmm. We don't run into any other issues anymore. But uh, we just recently had someone requesting stuff for for um, our customizer here where you can basically select the weapon that you want to buy and can change the attachments that you want to buy with it. That and sick, there was <laughs> there, there, there were certain issues with um, <laughs> modded items, you can imagine, because there is yeah. quite a few mods out there, there that uh, mod uh, or create items that are very modular, have different slots that are never Snuffy. wear a thing. And yeah, yeah, for example, <laughs> and um, these items have attachments that are not a thing in vanilla. So we had to figure out a way somehow to, to port these items so it doesn't completely fuck up in the preview or. You can at attach attachments to attachments, so you have like yeah. two uh, butt socks attached to the weapon. Buy it, what would be kind of ridiculous, and that was stuff that was happening basically. Uh -huh. So we we tried always to, to give a certain yeah support to that and add mod mod support for third party mods if it's possible. But yeah, we we. Always kind of limited to that, also. But we we always try. Yeah, well, that's so, it. I mean, that's basically, all you can do. basically, Liquid Rock fixes all that up. So, <laughs> all, all props to him. Go Absolutely. Liquid. So, so Liquid, like when when it comes to when it comes to that, obviously, there's a lot of weapons mods out there, and everybody does stuff very differently. So. so what are you what are you doing lemons <laughs> i can hear you talk <laughs> hmm? whisper to me baby yeah what's <laughs> yes, <I'm on. laughs> so going going back to the question so obviously a, a lot of different people have different processes when it comes to making their own like weapons and when you're trying to accommodate that into the expansion market what is like your process do you get like a request like oh can you do this for this this mod does do these mod creators come to you or like do you just think i want to implement xyz mod to make it work with expansion how does it work usually it's just the uh, server over is coming to us and saying okay this thing doesn't seem to work can you look into it and then we look into it and try to figure out if it's something that we can do if it's something mm -hmm. that the mod can do. in this case for the attachment as we had reached indeed with uh, tactical flavor i think it was a uh, on both sides like we needed to make a change and they i think have made or are going to make a change that will fix certain attachments that they have and we fixed already the part that we could fix on our side so that will hopefully be resolved it already works pretty well now with the uh, tactical flavor mode mm -hmm. and they, um, the issue was what steve already explained you can't have attachments on attachments basically two butt stocks or a scope inside a scope which oh was, god yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean it's not a big deal right but it looks ugly uh, it shouldn't be possible for the end user let's say it like that so we fixed our part of that and let's see what happens we hope that it's fixed Mm -hmm. and it wasn't even that difficult um, basically what they did in their mod is they uh, required that the guns are initialized but in daisy the initialization uh, is after i think 45 milliseconds in vanilla this right. is something that bohemia changed and we can't really have that we can't wait uh, 35 milliseconds for every, every attachment that would uh, mess up the market system or mess right. up the menu because we had to wait for every single one we couldn't do we enumerate all on, in one go uh, thankfully, there was a way around that, and for the other part, for certain attachment, we will have to wait on them, and hopefully they will uh, implement uh, the fix that I suggested, and hopefully that works for them. We will see. Mm -hmm. Okay, so nice. obviously that that's that's with um, tactical flavor. So yeah, how many? Flavor, yeah. yeah. So so how many of the kind of weapon mods have you? Um, helped make it compatible with expansion or is that kind of just like actually 
Mm, not that many for the customizer. Right. I'm okay. not sure, but I think um, I think that that's the only case. Like like that's for, the, that at least you need to do something. Case, yeah. I can't remember any any other case actually. Yeah. Right. So Most that... of the stuff just works out of the box. Yeah, I was just about to say that genuinely surprises me because I know a lot of people. Um, a lot of people use Snafu, for example. Snafu's been out for a yeah. while and they've yeah. done quite a lot of stuff. Really popular. So, yeah, so I, I'm quite surprised that it's only really happened to Tactical Flava. Um, very interesting. Very, very interesting. And what kind of a, like other struggles have you had? Because obviously, you know, you, you, you're kind of like the fixer-upper, essentially. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so what kind of like other Just issues have you kind of... In general. <laughs> so kind of like what other issues have you faced since coming to the team obviously apart from like splitting up in, in in the market what other kind of stuff have you worked on to kind of help improve expansion or make it more stable or anything like that um basically everything <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. walked in dumpster uh, fires like right get to work yeah i think it's actually it's actually only very little parts in this uh, i don't even know i think seven million lines of code that i haven't touched at least some capacity over the last two years <laughs> which is crazy Jesus. now we're saying that out loud know. but it's, um, it's quite insane yeah it's a big mod um mm -hmm. But it's at all code. I think the seven million lines is also the configs, and I haven't really touched that yeah. many uh, config stuff. But yeah, it's it's still. Oh God, uh, so many things that that uh, weren't um, quite working as expected, <laughs> in parts also due to mo uh, bugs in the underlying engine, mm -hmm. in, meaning Daisy, meaning Enforce Script, which is the scripting language that yeah. they have employed, which is very powerful, very nice to have, but it also has a a few uh, really annoying uh, bugs. A, um, a few issues, oh, just a very a few, few issues. issues. Wait yes. a minute here. You mean the features, right? The yeah, unintended game features, yes. Of course, <laughs> features, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, like you said, you know, you've you've done quite a lot of you know fixing. There's so much code to work through. Is there something that you have introduced? Completely from scratch to expansion. Oh, yes, um, yes. <laughs> a lot of things. It's quiet, yeah, but I can't uh, really from the top of my head think about something. I mean, what we had, what was a big deal for us actually, that you could ex install expansion without having to wipe for it. This was mm -hmm. a new thing. This, uh, this year? Yeah. Was it this year? I bet a lot of people like that. Oh, God, oh, yeah, yeah. I mentioned. And um, this was not completely my idea. This was originally uh, Jacob Mengel's idea and his implementation. And I took it over. And originally this was, or is still, maybe, hopefully, uh, meant for inclusion in community framework so that it can be used by all mods. Currently you can use it, but it requires expansion core. And, um, basically the feature is called mod storage and it allows you to have, mm -hmm. um, to be able to store certain data on items without having to wipe when you add a mod or wipe when you I actually them. remember that. I remember yes. uh, my I friend was... David Forge was super stoked about it. He was all like, this is actually really, really cool. Like, he went into the details like way above my level of knowledge, but like he was so, so happy about it. The system is really cool. Like I said, originally con uh, conceptualized and implemented by Jacob Mangle. And and uh, we included it in core basically to be able to use it because it's not in community framework yet. Hopefully, at some point it will be. Mm -hmm. and... I mean, yeah, because yeah, I think I remember, I've, I remember some time ago, quite a few people talking about mod storage and how people were waiting for it to come out. So it's so. Is that the only way that you were able to get people to install? uninstall expansion um, properly, effectively. It certainly made it a lot easier because the problem mm -hmm. that we had previously was people needed to wipe to add it. And that's no longer the case, at least if you're already using community framework, then you don't need to wipe to add it. You do need to wipe if you remove core, then mm -hmm. you need to wipe 
again, but you can at least, you know, try it out on a test server without having to wipe. You can use your existing storage to see how it integrates, how it works. That's uh, was I think a big plus for us. Yes, absolutely. I can I can certainly imagine. Yeah, because um, yeah, that that would have been a massive issue <laughs> issue at first. So it's it's good that you you finally did address yeah. that and 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 get that yeah. in. So props to you, fantastic work, absolutely. So something you've just shown off there, Steve, and I've always <laughs> been really interested in. How good are you at the game? Because bruh. <laughs> <laughs> it's not showing off the same, let me tell you. <laughs> well, there you go, there you go. So, uh, it's quite difficult when, when they come three people at you and merely yeah. hit you uh, merely hit you to <laughs> that. Oh, yeah. Nah, mate, nah, uh, mate. Skill of shoot, skill of shoot. I'm so bad in this, bad in this game. The bug markers of the AI. <laughs> because <laughs> it's a real big uh, red and green... Uh, Rectangles in the air, rotating around. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was pretty <laughs> funny. So, so we're just making sure that Steve I'm all... isn't responsible for testing how difficult the AI is, right? Because... <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. Actually, so, uh, but the AI is actually a really interesting topic because quite a few people in the past have tried to work on getting AI like this to work. Are you able to tell us a little bit of story about that? Uh, for for oh, expansion? Yeah. Definitely. Well, you probably know the Infusion AI mod, which mm -hmm. orig originated actually from expansion code that could, got took over by Raylian, I think, back in the day when he yeah. worked on the mod. It was a separate mod, and after a while um, it was basically abandoned, so it took uh, the experiential version of it over back into expansion and worked on that, and that's actually where I spent most of my time this year, in the beginning of the year, until I think around May, and even, even still, I'm still mm -hmm. working on it time to time. Um, it's it's still a bit clunky, but they work a lot better than the initial release. The initial release was really clunky. They could uh, they could walk into each other. They could uh, not avoid obstacles. Um, um, Jacob Mangel has actually done a lot with pathfinding. It works pretty well, actually. I would say yeah. now. And they can open doors. They can vault over buildings, over fences. Mm -hmm. Beat the shit I can out of you. Get to a <laughs> with you, although that looks really clunky. So I, they can't can drive, with you, but they can't drive themselves. Um, it's also probably something that we won't add anytime soon. No, um, if absolutely. Ever. But um, they have come a long way, I would say, from the really early release. So well, AI very, very cool. is of a misnomer, I would say, because they're mm. not, not really that intelligent. But we I try to yeah. make it look like uh, a bit more immersive than it was. Uh -huh. well, well, that's it, because, you know, the, the AI is, is, um, it has, what's the word I'm looking for, evolved over time. I still remember, like, the first iterations yeah. of, like, the AI that, that came about. And, yeah, it was rough you could see it was rough but you could also see that there's potential so you know you oh, just yeah. see there with the ai actively jumping over the walls as scale speed has just said in chat that is terrifying <laughs> that's pretty scary it so is. how how in terms of the ai how much more is there to make it more fluid less janky if anything at all well i would say our possibilities are probably a bit limited by the engine because um Animation support is is not there. I think mm -hmm. in the engine to make it really work properly, but I had I'd have to test it. Currently, we're using we're overriding some stuff for the animations to make it work. Um, yeah, I, I'm not uh, totally happy, but not not sure how much of it can be fixed. So, um, one of the updates we recently th had, I think it was one point sixteen. How much did the unlocking of the infected animation control actually help? with the player AI? Was it easier or is it just remaining the same? I think that didn't affect us at all, I think. Okay. Oh. It's, um, it, it's nice to have, sure, certainly for, for certain stuff, if you want to have your own um, AI infected, but then it would probably be a really good thing. Mm -hmm. um, for our AI, I didn't really do much, but I, I didn't really look deeply into it. Mm -hmm. 
And is, and is uh, infected AI something that you've also looked into as part of a team? Or has I'll it just been not. purely like player AI kind of stuff? Yeah, player AI. Ah, that's fair enough. I any but plans on that? I mean, you know, that would be fucking terrifying. We could extend it to um, give uh, zombies, for example, the same underlying AI that we're using currently for players. Of course, they couldn't take weapons or something like that. No. They would just attack you like zombies, so there's, there's that. And then the question becomes, um, is it worth it? Because the uh, performance overhead of the AI is, is quite significant, except especially for pathfinding, I think. That's fair. Yeah. Remember correctly, that's, that's the main thing that costs a lot of performance. Um, so yeah, and... just to have the zombies back basically act very similar to the vanilla zombies, I'm not sure if it's worth it, to be honest. I mean, they can already That's sell true. zucchinis, so why not? There you go, mate. There you go. It's got to start yeah. somewhere. Gotta There's start a lot somewhere. of things that AI can do that people haven't used, I think. Like, they can be used as traders and PCs, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, same as zombies. Uh, you can use them as roaming traders because they can stop yes. when the player interacts with them. So you yeah. can basically make the black market some random NPC that roams through the map, for example, um, stuff like that. They can, when they kill you, if they kill a player, they can emote at you and stole your gun. So yes. yeah, <laughs> they can true. do a lot of stuff. They're super it's, toxic. It's so, actually yeah. a configuration <laughs> option. I called it Manus. And if you set Manus to zero, then they will basically flip you off and they kill you. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> Oh, that's funny as hell. I love it. That, that's great. <laughs> that's fantastic. <laughs> that's been wrong for a while. Oh, that's um, great. Oh, that's uh, great. Noticing. Steve, on the mask, um, the AI don't shoot you because... Yeah, I, I don't get it. That's what I yeah, wanted to ask. Yeah, this update has broken that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. It works, so. okay. yeah. Wait, can they what still the write fuck? cards? Oh, they are shooting. They're shooting each other now. Okay, interesting. <laughs> Wait, wait, they shoot me when I... When you crouch. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Interesting. Devel active so development, I'll everyone. Out. There you go. What is causing that? But, yeah. Now, uh, are the AI at the stage where you can set them to be separated factions so they can fight each other? Or is it still yep. in the works? Or is it not being considered? They can do that already, yeah. Oh, that's close. You can even create your own factions with their own um, basically condition for friendliness. That is not possible for a configuration. You have to mod it, you have to script it, but it's possible. That is pretty darn cool, to be fair. That's really, really cool. I'm just in awe. <laughs> it's, it is pretty it's cool. Fantastic. Now, one of the um, things I remember, uh, Steve, when you were working on the yeah. quest system, you streamed it. Um, we got mm. to see old snippets of you actually developing the quest system. Do you guys True. plan on doing yeah. more streams for expansion in the future of different development processes and stuff? Of course, when you're ready to show it off. I would love to stream more often. And depends on on the time and, and mood I, I can uh, bring up. And yeah, it's always quite difficult to, to yeah, really focus on something when when you try to really active develop on something mm -hmm. on stream uh yeah. because you always get involved with questions and sure you want to get uh uh somehow in contact with the community when you stream so mm -hmm. uh yeah maybe <laughs> i hope so yeah. i i really actually awesome, just dude. i i just uh, Brought a microphone for that, so I can really stream, um, yeah, correctly. Because I always had some kind of technical difficulties with my headset microphone when mm -hmm. I was streaming, nice. but yeah, that's solved now. But uh, I will see. As I was actively streaming for about a week, there uh, I was basically in holidays, and people, yeah, kind of loved. When I like was a, streaming, like a stream buddy, one who can read questions yeah. for you while you develop, right? <laughs> like, ha! Uh, I would love that. Yeah, I so love that. baby, yeah. I think you should. I, th I, th I think personally, I think when when 
when modders develop on something like you know quite unique you know ex expansion development is, is a very unique and it's a it's a it's a beast and it's always good in my opinion for those modders to show off how it actually is you know some people might have a misconception where it's like you just press a button and it just fixes it or you just add stuff obviously it's not like that at all there's a lot of patience <laughs> so oh, yeah <laughs> yeah so I think it's good that people open up. I know, Dump, you know, you've you've done some various development streams in the past. I've done a couple. And, you know, it's 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 good to give people the idea of, like, this is what actually modding... This is what modding actually is. And, you know, people... People, some find that interesting, which is which is awesome. Are, th are they beaten... Are they... Yeah. <laughs> they, they killed each other by beating me, but I am in... Invincible, basically, so they killed each other. <laughs> nice. So, one one big question I do have regarding the um, AI. Um, it is very interesting to see, but I was wondering, do you guys think you would expand the AI states based off of player interaction? Like, to use an example, within, like, the Half-Life series, if you were to approach, like, a Metro Cop, they would be in, like, more of an intimidation state, or they would try to intimidate the player and not directly kill them instantly. But if they were to do yeah, something like God, maybe actually, attack the Metro Cop yeah, or something. That, that, that's in already, right, Lever? Like in some way? In some way, yes. We have a guard faction that basically acts in a similar way, which means you have to be relatively close and you have to raise your weapon for them to basically go aggro on you. Okay. That's pretty cool. That's something not in, in that direction. And also, the threat system is based on on quite a few stats. It's distance, it's the weapon you have, it's if you're raised, if you have this weapon raised or not, and if you're looking in that direction. Yeah. This that's system awesome. can be expanded. That's that's for sure. Well, there you go. That's really cool. So, now, do you have any plans to expand those states, or do you yes, are you pretty happy with how they are right now? In, in, in general, I want to make it more immersive, so have the, the states make sense in, in as many situations as I can. It's currently working relatively fine, but sometimes, due to the way um, we are used raycasts to check if, they, uh, if a player is in line of sight, and some of these raycasts go through buildings, even though they should collide, but we are using a simpler form of the raycast for performance reasons. And they mm -hmm. gave, sometimes go to, to through buildings and through base buildings, so they see you even if you're behind the wall, and then they come to you, which is not quite intended. They should should only come to you if they really see you, but yeah, we will see. We can fix so that So what somewhere. he did there? I saw that, yeah, that was quite, that was quite interesting. You, you run through, through the area and search for a weapon and pick it up. Only yep. to beat the shit out of you with it. <laughs> They will not shoot at you in the mask there unless you crouch, which is which is really funny. I don't get why. <laughs> it's it's kind of weird well, though. It's because it's the, oh, I'm goodness. sure it has some oh. to it. That's what that was added for the um for the um, space suit. I'm sure it's something like that. No, I have what? noticed in the. Wait, wait. So, obviously, you know, we'll, we'll say quite a few times. Expansion's been out for quite some time now. And it has evolved, but what oh, kind yeah. of contents that you've developed eventually didn't reach the final product, essentially? What what stuff had to be cancelled because it, it just wasn't finished. working out? Or Because oh. I, I do remember in the leading up to expansion coming out, there was pictures of like the, the biplane, um, but I've never quite seen that actually oh, yeah, be planes. released. I could be... I could be wrong. I don't know if that's something that's actively been worked on again. Um, but I'd, I'd love to hear more about that. Uh, yeah, planes and bikes, stuff like that, or the parachutes. It's stuff that was always a thing that we wanted to bring into the mods. Mm -hmm. But due to, yeah, limitations that the engine and just the, the yeah the infusion mm -hmm. uh script language gives us it was always quite difficult and that's why it's still not a thing in the mod yet yeah so planes much. and uh bikes yeah. uh, that were a big part of 
Jacob Mango actually also who worked quite for a lot of time on that not mm -hmm. only to to bring bikes but also to create a kind of new different uh, simulation for the vehicles that was based on client side so more the ama 3 uh, way uh, how vehicles behave uh, yeah in in ama 3 and he never could really finish it up because mm -hmm. of synchronization issues yeah uh, on and that's because of limitations uh, the engine gave us or him in this case mm -hmm. and that's why it's not a thing yet and probably never will be a thing or so parachute spikes mm. planes will not be not introduced into expansion that's yeah it's okay. it's understandable it is a shame but when you do reach some limitations you've just got to be like look there's nothing yeah. much more we can do there there's no point in like just you just essentially smashing your head against a brick wall there's just no point you're not going to get past it I so. your losses <laughs> so yeah that's it's fair enough that's fair enough but what stuff you know what other stuff have you ended up having to cancel apart from obviously those those major things or you just had a scrap or just shelved that may be uh coming out um sometime in the future mm. or at least an idea of what you like to introduce well base building is one of those yeah yeah it was, it was worked on by several people uh, like for the past years and it was never, oh. yeah, it was never like f fully a package of something to basically release, um, which is basically my mission now. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that's that's one one clear element that I can see that it, it was shelved and, and never finished. Mm -hmm. And I think like some minor stuff, some random vehicle or or a weapon or stuff like that. Also, um, yeah, it's it's difficult. To, to, to pinpoint some uh, unfinished stuff there's a lot <laughs> i can i can imagine you know with, with people that's come and gone it's completely fair yeah definitely well, hello there but um no it's 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 all really really interesting and you know there's not many you know major if any um mod projects like expansion is that something that's you will are surprised by or do you think there could be like competition so to speak between like days expansion maybe another future um major mod project like expansion hmm. or is that something that's ever like kind of crossed your mind uh i don't know that's that's something kind of controversial to to talk about if you ask me um <laughs> that's, that's I, fair I, enough. I i mean from my point of view i don't think there will ever be a project like it again mm -hmm. and and there wasn't competition for it because people from the core basis of the community think for themselves like they yeah. they want the, the credit or the project or whatever to be their own thing um, which is a shame. It's a yeah. it's a huge shame. Um, expansion has dealt with a lot of um, undeserved hate for many reasons, and it's the, the core idea comes from that. I I, I think mm -hmm. um, it's very it's a very different community, like the Daisy community as a whole, uh, than than Arma, for example. When in Arma, you can see a lot of uh, huge projects. Uh, sometimes based on a certain type of mod, like, I don't know, some yeah. vehicles, but made by a team of 10 people, for example, working sometimes on two vehicles uh, because the amount of features that they plan to to work on. Yeah. And yeah, some, that's something that I don't see it happening ever again in, in DayZ. Uh, expansion, when I was before knowing the, the team and, and such, expansion was... The same thing that I saw back in the day as Epoch or Origins, mm -hmm. for example, in Arma 2, yeah. it took me straight into that idea. And, and it's a shame that we never saw a stuff like that made again for, for DayZ. I, I think people yeah. moved on, but yeah, it, it, the, the main reason it's it's their own interest, I guess. That would make sense, yeah, because that's, that's the one thing that's always kind of like 
um, surprised me with the community. You know, I've I've been around in modding for the past two years and doing the podcast for you know pretty much half of that time. So it is pretty interesting that um, that nobody's ever tried to um, to do what you guys have done in terms of scope, not necessarily in terms of content, because you know everybody has their own different way on on doing things. Yep. But w- would you like actively encourage people to try and get out of that that mindset and to be like, look, if you want to create this big project, there's nothing wrong with reaching out to other people and making it into something bigger. Is that something that you would actively encourage? Personally, definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We need more of that, of that energy, of that collaborative energy, basically, because it's mm-hmm. one of the principles of modding. Like, yeah. there's no way to figure out all of this on your own. You're out there uh, cross-posting stuff, and your findings and such, to to basically do stuff. So yeah. th- there's nothing wrong with it. And if you can get a team to work on, on any sort of project, that's fantastic, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. The, the only thing that uh you have to keep in mind if you really you want to start that is that you have to bring a lot of yeah let's say uh just where the time to 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 invest mm, and, uh, yeah. to to get used to that stuff um sure there will be people that you can reach out to and that will probably teach you stuff but you always have to be, uh, uh, yeah, aware that you probably have to figure out stuff by yourself, yeah. by your own, which at is a fair. certain point. Yeah. Which is fair, but um, yeah, it, mm-hmm. things can get frustrating very soon in in day Z. But keep going. Uh, try and error. And as soon as you get results that you are basically uh, want to see, then it starts to kick in and you're addicted. Well, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, I remember like one of my, personally, one of my first modern mods I ever done was the solid field tablets, which dump actually taught me the absolute basics of modding in 3D modeling and literally the extent of my friendly modeling was just getting the cube and just squishing it down and calling it a day. <laughs> I nice. had to I had to do my UV and my texture in paint.net because I didn't have any other programs at the time. And it was like, wow. And it just kind of spiraled from then. It's like now I, I work on like on lights, dynamic lights and, and more more recently um model that I'm working on is with the world lighting and, and changing that up. And I always try and encourage and try and help other people. It's like, you know, if, if you need help, ask, you know, someone's going to help you. Someone's going to know how to do something like that. Because I don't believe in gatekeeping in, in any community, especially the modern community. Like, if you've got knowledge, it should be shared. And, it, and it's great that, you know, you're, def- you're, you're essentially encouraging people and giving them pretty solid advice on the best way to, to do that. So, you know, props to you. Absolutely. It's really, really cool. That was very cool. Hell yes. So is there anything more that you'd like to kind of um kind of like touch on? Or kind of like to, to share? You you showed us quite a lot with with um with the with the markets, the AI and in and, and mm. various stuff like that. So and, and the quests. So is there something else that you maybe you've got in the or the pipeline or something that you just want to talk about? Hmm. Well, we recently added this little. I'm yes, I'm interested in this. And Rover. Mm-hmm. That's going to be work for your that, liquid. That that, <laughs> that was uh, made by Jose That's from Stretch, basically, uh, mm-hmm. and got introduced in into the mod recently. After there was some conclusion about uh, a Land Rover mod on the yes. workshop <laughs> that got <laughs> somehow deleted, and mm. we thought, oh. okay, maybe we can do something for the community mm-hmm. and throw some of the yeah 
community money basically into this model and then Jose got into it and mm -hmm. made it ready for the game. Yeah, it was a, bought it, it, it's, it ready from scratch. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it's, a, it's a classic uh, vehicle basically and yeah. uh, when that mod was deleted I was like, well, that's a shame because it was uh, perfectly done and and I understand the reasons why it was deleted. Uh, so, yeah, I, yeah, I, I yeah. proposed the idea to, to put in an expansion and why not? Nice. Um, and I started working on it and there it is. So people yeah, have it, now the Land Rover in the lineup. And there's another vehicle coming, by the way. Um, it's a military vehicle, American-based. I won't tell you which one it is because I want to keep it close to my chest. <laughs> Is it an uh, SUV? It's coming... a tractor and camo, right? It's, it's a military vehicle, but it's it's not an SUV. Uh, so, it's a military so... vehicle. It's also a really known vehicle for those who played Wasteland and, and the old Arma 2 mods. I'm, I'm the nostalgia guy, by the way. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, okay, I'm, it, I'm very uh, I'll see when, when I can put it in expansion because uh, the priority now is to make sure vehicles work after the update. Mm -hmm. So whatever that happens, we'll see to to make sure to to add something to say, hey, we got this new toy with this new system. So yeah, absolutely. We'll see what I'm, happens. I am I am you. You've definitely piqued my interest. Definitely, <laughs> I can't I can't wait for you to show that off when that's ready. I I, I must say the work that you've put into this Land Rover, it looks really really nice. It looks really put the, solid. Put the orange skin, the orange one. Can you get the spray can? Break it. Oh, the uh, orange one is the orange one is my favorite. <laughs> by the way. Because Boydy is apparently having to resort to uh, typing in caps, he's wondering if the AI <laughs> can break through doors. Yep, uh, they they go through doors, uh, but uh, what do you mean by breaking through them? Like, if they if, are locked, if I don't know. Doors. Yeah, if the doors locked. Well, like, they shoot the door when they hit it. The locked doors, but they can go through uh, normal doors. Unlocked yeah. doors. Okay, so locked doors do stop them. A little bit. At the moment, yes. That's uh, going to change at some point, I guess, mm -hmm. but um, we can't announce anything yet. That's fair. Okay, enough. so you're here to hear, folks. Once you <laughs> lock your doors, they're going to come for you one day. <laughs> one day. One day. They're, yes. they're just, they're all going to be waiting at the door and they're just going to be staring at you through the window. Wait, just... that's, that's actually, yeah, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, they stand in front of the door as long as you're inside and don't they're go just, away. They're just going to stare at you like this. Yes. Yes. Oh, my God. Very good. Oh, that's a very good stay. <laughs> if you guys ever wanted to make uh whoever who's the meme lord? I forgot is it, uh you oh, who you um, <laughs> yeah, I think. Um Yeah, yeah. If you ever <laughs> want to, Lad has this lighting config that makes it look like a horror movie. You just have them all standing outside looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> Fluoroid staring straight at you. Yep. Just Oh wow. That's fine, that's fine, it's flat. Yeah. Okay. Don't forget the rims. Paint those rims, boy. Ooh, yeah, they're okay. orange too. Oh, I forgot. Now I'm, I'm lower, lower to the rim. Steve, please. <laughs> For the love there of God. Go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there oh that's go. so cool. I'm sorry. This thing has I'm so not many. I'm a player, okay? I'm just working in the background. That I, had, <laughs> I mean, this thing has so many paintable parts that I had to buff the spray can because it wasn't enough. <laughs> I was just I was to making say, it. like, <laughs> yeah. holy shit, how much break do you need? I Damn. I think Almost it was like, I, think I, doubled, I think I doubled it just to make sure that it was working. Um, but yeah, it's a really known vehicle. Right. Oh, that and is, all the feedback I got from it at least was positive. So yeah, I think it was a good yeah, call to, really to nice. put it in expansion. <laughs> so somebody who's implemented this i've always kind of wanted to do my own vehicle i've always wanted to do my kind of like own like transit van you know the big ford vans that you get where you can open the side <coughs> how difficult is it to implement a vehicle uh even with that concept in mind i mean from like we're talking from scratch you've never ported an item or work on the game basically you've you've, you've got well, some of you've done some basic stuff yeah you've got well, some understanding if you have an understanding of of how proxies work and what the parts that you need to split from the original model um work it's not that difficult it's super time consuming 
mm-hmm. to get it right, like to get the, the details right, to make sure the scale of the vehicle is correct yeah. with the player model. That's probably the most annoying part of the process, if you ask me, um, yeah. because I can basically cut the model in like an hour, but nailing the scale and 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 the small details plan the amount of detail that i want to do like the lights for example and stuff like that that's usually what's super time consuming Mm -hmm. then it's the configuration part the simulation part that's also something uh, difficult to understand um, the first time that you're dealing with a vehicle hence why people simply copy paste the configuration from vanilla vehicles which is not bad if you ask me depends on the vehicle because if vehicles go too fast, the game bugs well, out and yeah. you went out flying and stuff like that. And it's also not super uh, realistic even. Yeah. So uh, vehicles that handle like the Ada and the Gunther are basically the standard. And, you, and you're and probably going to end up right in between with whatever setting that you're trying to do. Uh, that's probably the most uh, difficult part. Um, and, and it's mostly because of... Uh, the tool set that we have to mod in general, mm-hmm. which is uh, prehistoric compared to what we got with Armor Re- Reforger. Um, that's actually depressing when you want to work again in DayZ after touching Reforger for something okay. so complex as a vehicle, uh, because you can do basically uh, changes in two clicks and test them right off the bat. And, and here you need to pack the mod, Put yeah. the server because vehicles don't behave the same <laughs> offline than on a multiplayer oh, setting. Servers even up. Hey, oh, hey. yeah. This Steve, it's like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's just he's yeah. just he's just proven that you know modders don't play the game. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> say that, so so it, it's something that in general is super time consuming. It's probably the mm-hmm. most of all the assets that you can port to the game it's probably the most time consuming to to get right because you can work on weapons and weapons it's super easy on yeah on 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 that end uh clothing might be more difficult on the modeling side but to put it in the game is actually quite straightforward too yeah but vehicles you're you're struggling right from the start with the model itself you're already struggling on something so yeah i'm gonna throw base building in there base building it's also yeah i'm yeah. learning my ways on that and yeah it's also quite difficult to 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 grasp the idea of how it works that's something that it took oh, yeah. me a while to understand mm-hmm. um but yeah but the model because the models are actually simple but you need to plan the entire thing and you need to imagine how it's going to cut and divide and yeah. how it's going to build visually and that's the difficult part with it but yeah in general, it's it's super time consuming. I, I encourage anyone who, like, when I started modding, I went from making a knife that was my first item on a Saturday night at 4 a.m. just googling tutorials on YouTube to a car. I went from zero to hundred, basically learning everything <laughs> in between. That, um, that's that's a mood right there. It's just like right, I have a basic understanding. Yeah. I'm gonna go overboard. Let's go for it. Yeah. I was like, how hard can it be? Just YOLO it and, and went in. <laughs> and it took me it okay, took me like do the helicopter. It took me like two months <laughs> to get like the, the that initial car completely finished. Basically mm-hmm. it took me around two months. Uh, but now I can do it much faster. So yeah. That, that well, is close. To you. I know many people who would have just given up after the first week. <laughs> <laughs> I would have I'd be like, fuck this shit, I'm going back to lights. <laughs> it's easier. <laughs> Like but, helicopters. Um... Helicopters were a, a different thing, for example. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was actually, it's they're actually simpler than a regular car, but uh, it took me a while to, to understand, okay, how it works under expansion, because I know how a car works on vanilla, but now it's expansion in the middle. So mm-hmm. that was like super difficult to understand at first. Uh, I, I was playing around with a single model that I had, uh, until I managed to get everything right, check my notes, check everything that is correct. And then I started porting everything else. And it took me like three months to port all 12 helicopters from Arma 2. Mm-hmm. Oh. That's hell. <laughs> so that. <laughs> so that shit. <laughs> so I, I want to take um, 
I want to take a few questions from our viewers. You know, I know Boydie's been hounding at the questions. I've just been trying to find a good time to to ask them. Um, if that's all right with you, if we take a couple of questions from the from the viewers. Sure. Fantastic. Yeah. So Boydie's asked, with the traveling trader, does he communicate his location at all? Maybe via radio? Anything that gets more players on radio is a win for me. Not currently, no. It's, that's a cool idea. Follow a set path, but that's something that's actually a cool idea, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, I think that's a pretty fair idea. I think that's pretty good because you would expect something like that, even if it's just like a custom audio file or something like that that what just plays. Is actually check if a certain entity, in this case this trader, enters a certain location, for example a small town, and then a notification gets sent to our player, something like that. Mm -hmm. That's something that I could imagine. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Well, there you, well, there you go, Boydie. You know, you, you got you got to you got to credit him for that idea. You got to love it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's that that is pretty awesome. That's um, that idea. Fingers crossed. Um, fingers crossed. Steam the traitor, Boydie. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So if, if anybody in chat does have any questions you want to ask the team, go right ahead. Love to hear them, love to ask them. Um, I've, I've pretty much asked everything I would quite possibly ask. Apart from, okay, one more question from me. In terms yeah. of weapons, um, I know not a banana previously worked in expansion who done the more guns mod. I believe he implemented that mod into expansion. Uh, am I correct? All right. Mod? Yes, I think so. And has there been any plans for future weapons to be implemented by somebody on the team um, to kind of like just expand on the arsenal that it does provide? <clears throat> Why? Well, actually. We're actually removing weapons now. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's happening the opposite because Vanilla basically has added a lot of the weapons that are present mm. on, on the base pack from expansion. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's so difficult. I, I thought about it on, into adding a weapon. But mm -hmm. the question is, why would we when there's like mods like Snafu or Morty weapons that have every single weapon you can think of. Uh, That's fair enough. Yeah. That's yeah. fair enough. Okay, the, yeah. You can see in the recent patches that they add weapon by weapon in basically every patch, and now they tease us in the last tweet with a new weapon? Yes, the yeah, SSG-82. Uh, which is quite interesting, so... Uh, the last weapon we just had to remove was the was the grenade grenade launcher, which was quite a thing for a yeah. long time and expansion, so and now it's into to be removed. Yeah. Basically, yeah, exactly. And yeah, we we have no plans for a new weapon mm -hmm. to be open. We That's we have. We what we can do maybe one day is to update a bit the models of the custom weapons we added because we have uh yeah some some visual updates for the models uh, in the back end but uh, it, it depends if it's really it, it's not really necessary and and. Just a very minor, minor optical change for every weapon. That's fair enough. Yeah, because um, I, I guess I didn't really consider that because obviously you know there'd be several owners out there who would just want purely expansion. Maybe they'd want like quite a few weapons. But compared to when expansion first came out to now, there's been a lot more weapons re-added in and new ones completely added from scratch yeah. from from vanilla. So I guess it does does kind of pause just in that regard alone what could possibly be added yeah sure you can have your acrs and whatever else but what would be the point yeah, they, they even added the the craftable explosives i wanted yeah. to actually work on that i i actually made uh, some models for that to put in expansion and 
an update after that they added it themselves so i was like okay <laughs> i'll take it <laughs> and, and, yeah it saved me a lot of work so yeah mm -hmm. they, they've been pushing a lot of new content on, on vanilla thankfully yeah so yeah it's it's something that it, it's pointless for for us to add I, I thought about adding a clothing item and that's also difficult too because uh, you have people like Winstride doing fantastic yeah. job on his mod and he added a lot of unique items that were like on my idea but yeah yeah uh, it, it's also difficult to add such small thing uh, hence vehicles why vehicles it's super cool to add because they are unique not a lot of people make them and you get a cohesive package with expansion so that's that's a good thing for for vehicles mm -hmm. yeah that's that's fair enough yeah because I've, I've had um i've personally had limited um experience with clothing i, I made my own gloves um for namosk um when i was working on a server with mass which is now part of mmio mm -hmm. And I've done plenty of guns, like importing them. Uh, one most recently was the R700 used on the Zero servers. I imported that and got that, um, got that ready for them. Um, and I was I was very very happy with the progress in that. So, it, it, in one hand, it is a shame that you're not planning that anymore. But on the other hand, it's like it's probably definitely for the best. Absolutely. I'm just waiting to see if uh, uh, chat has any questions. I don't think they do. Come on, how oh, hey. It doesn't look look like so. No. <laughs> no, absolutely. What? <laughs> one uh, more thing I uh, might can talk about is the uh, thing that no one really realized yet, probably uh, nice. that we have added a mod recently that call is called Hardline. Which is, uh, let's say, a very early stage and adds a few uh, additional features to some other mods of expansion, like the market. Mm -hmm. As you can see, this these items have like a rarity on them. I saw, th I saw that, yes. Yeah, and depending on the rarity of the items, which are completely configurable, again, by... Uh, mm -hmm the certain configuration files that the mod uh, adds to your server uh, configuration, mm -hmm. uh, you can uh, restrict items to a certain humanity level that you can see uh, on the down right corner on, on my screen right I've now. Seen, I have yeah. 100 certain humanity right now. And based on the hum humanity, the player gets a certain rank and it's basically like you you know it maybe from heroes and bandits you can be mm -hmm. a hero and you can be a bandit there is not many stuff yet that can influence this except from infected kills player kills uh mm -hmm. stuff like that and and some minor actions but uh i i plan to to uh build up on that in the future so in the near future and basically it allows you to restrict items to to a uh, player level so if you want to say okay the player shouldn't be able to buy an AK trade uh, from the beginning if he mm -hmm. has the money for it you can restrict that to a certain level so he has to 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 really uh, achieve some stuff on the server um to really yeah let's say trade certain items mm -hmm. that is an idea that comes over from if you remember daisy uh armor 3 exile right this is a very old mod but um yeah, it, it, it's an idea that I always liked, and uh, we want to. Uh, 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 my idea was to basically bring some more progression into it, it 
don't lose the humanity uh, if you die. So um, there can be some kind of progression system next to your character, even if you die. And uh, that's what I kind of want to achieve with, with Hardline, to bring some different kind of end game content mm -hmm. uh, based on this new rank and humanity system we want to introduce that. That's pretty. That's, very, very that, cool. that, that is pretty interesting, though. I, I like that idea. I really, really do. It's, it's good. It's awesome. I fucking love it. <laughs> I think it's really, really cool. Certainly, um, when 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 it's come to Daisy in the past, you know, there's been quite a few, you know, the Heroes and Bandits mod and all that much, where it's got a humanity system, and I know that the old Daisy mods from Daisy mod had that as well so it's always nice to see that's something that i wouldn't say has been tradition in the community but it's kind of like being somewhat of a staple with modding is always kind of like transitioned but also being adapted to what we have modern day which is awesome really really cool <clears throat> which is so insane because uh thanks to that modularity we have mm -hmm. to, to the uh with the mods now you can just yeah do your thing like you don't have to use the humanity system but if you want to you can just expand the the content that is is given to you by the mods like the market system with an other mod that you just add to to your to to your server basically mm -hmm. and expand the functionality to it which is kind of insane but it's it's yeah possible thanks to all the the modularity and split up that has been done now. That's it's, very cool. It's, it is really brilliant. It's it's I've I've always kind of been the adv advocate for modularity when it comes to mods and going back to when you decided to split it up. I was very very happy with that. Very very happy. So you know, keep it up. You uh, know? Absolutely. Not necessarily a question from our chat, but I saw, I was personally watching Marx's uh, last uh, stream, and somebody asked him if expansion ever got the parachutes from for helicopters working, where you oh. can use it on the player. <laughs> so, unfortunately, that, unfortunately yeah. that's also a feature that will probably never, or that will for certain never make it into expansion because we scrapped it completely. Yeah, that's it was enough. so broken that we couldn't make it work. Or Jacob couldn't make it work. Um, I was not really involved in that, and so at some point we said, "Okay, that's the one system we really have to scrap completely." And I don't think it will be coming back. No, no. So, yeah, I'm unfortunately, not no. it's too clunky, and the main issue is just animations. Like you uh, can imagine, mm. like all the the mods out there that try to add some certain custom animation to the game. Uh, every other mod that will try to add a, a, a animation to the game will break it. So yeah, you so can all mods, right? Sure. Yeah. The animation. Correct. That that's the main issue mm -hmm. that we have with Daisy. And One without a an real animation framework that someone was working on but hmm. never released yet i want to talk about names here but okay uh it's okay. yeah it, it's quite quite hard to achieve and yeah. without that it's to totally really do something that is is yeah also oh, that, satisfying that's, that's to look at so nobody's still waiting on it. That's really cool, though. That's really good information for people to hear about. Um, I think Lad's pretty much covered a lot of my own situations. Uh, my own questions on situations. Uh -huh. um, so, like, so far, this is a fun question. Uh, what is the most unique quest anyone has shared with you guys or have you guys seen made with your quest system so far? Mm. Uh, that's a cool question. I need to check on all the quests that I've seen. 
<laughs> get search and uh, boy. So, someone, someone. I think I'm not sure if if it went live, but I helped someone with a quest of a lot of fruit. Basically, the the guy basically wanted to make players completely starve when the server when you basically spawn in for the first time. And the starting quest, the starting quest was basically like a treasure hunt, and the treasure hunt was the starting gear. Uh, that was uh, something interesting. Oh my god! That's and I was funny. helping troubleshoot that idea, but I never made, I never run the quest. But I was helping someone troubleshoot that that idea. Um, it's probably the most original that I've seen so far. I haven't, I haven't seen like, I was expecting role play servers to to use the system, but I haven't found any yet. Like, That's a because shame. I know they, they, they will probably go nuts with it once they know how to use it. Definitely. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I'm not sure about it, but I hope so. But if you want to see some unique quests, uh, there is the Freedom 35 server out there. Uh, oh, yeah. I think it was the Livonia one. Um, mm. If you looked at server up like freedom 35 should should pop up uh they have some unique quests on there nice. and you you can have uh quite quite fun have quite some fun with the quests on there if you want and test them out freedom 35 i'll have to check that out definitely definitely so... It's sadly the only server I know out of my mind that uses quest system. Right. Most servers, they've got to take more advantage of it. I mean, how it's brilliant. I mean, we have like 14,000 subscribers on this mod. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have to imagine people can subscribe to the single mods and to the bundle. And the bundle basically uh, has every single mod still in it. Yeah. So if you want to go full expansion, just take the bundle, just a side note. But on, on the single quest mod, we have like 14,000 subscribers, which late, lets me think, okay, there has to be some servers out there that use this quest system. It's so, got to be. Absolutely. It, it also takes time when, when there's a mod that basically has a lot of configuration because this requires a lot of user work to, to get the most out of it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it takes a lot of time for big communities to, 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 try, to try it out. That's what happened with Market, for example. Like a year after Market's release, uh, we're finally seeing uh, the huge communities uh switch to expansion market and True, it's yeah mostly and it's mostly because at the time that it takes to do a proper setup for for their own right uh, so with yeah. quest i think it's something similar it's, it's gonna take a while because not only you have to learn the system but you also demands a lot of you creatively because you need to think about what the quests are about uh that's why i was thinking okay role play servers are gonna be probably the first to embrace it because uh, they are writing lore and stuff like that for their server every mm -hmm. single day. So, so <coughs> I, I kind of imagine that. Well, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. We'll just have to see. So with that, since chat doesn't have any more questions, um, and I, I've, I've run out of questions to ask, I don't know about <laughs> Dump uh, or Lemons, if you've got anything more you want to ask. I think a lot of it's been covered already, and it's just, it's such a, um, such an amazing thing to see, you know, and mm -hmm. I hope eventually as console evolves and they bring more stuff to it, we can get something close to this, if anything. So, 100%, great job, guys, you know, it's amazing work. Keep it up, you know, it's, it's, even, even as, you know, time has gone and the team has gotten a little bit smaller, it's still brilliant to see that, you know, you're still pushing on, you're still making updates and, you know, 119 is right around the corner and I, I can't wait to see what you will be introducing once the vehicles are all sorted out and what new stuff you'll have down in the pipeline you know I'm looking forward to the base building looking forward to the new vehicles 
So, you know, props to the lot of you, and I really, really do appreciate you coming on the show. I really, really do. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah, yes. thank you. It's been, it's been an Again. absolute pleasure. It really, really has. So, typically, I mean, if you regular to the show, um, Steve, I've seen you in chat quite a few times, so um, typically we'll talk about the topics that we have planned for the show. We're still going to go ahead and do that. So if you guys want to stick around and you want to pitch in with those topics, that's perfectly fine. If you don't, that's also perfectly fine as well. Or we'll slightly uh, give the guests the option to stay or if they want to leave. Let's just say, I mean, I'm staying. <laughs> Fair enough. Talking about DC, just keep at it. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> hell yes. Good shit. Good yet. In that case, Namalsk. <laughs> the new update's out. What do you, what, for, for, obviously you guys, you know, you've, you've developed a little bit for, um, you know, expansion on, on Namalsk. You came across that very weird bug. Has anybody actually had time to, to play the proper update yet? Sadly, no. Um, <laughs> well, I know you haven't, Steve. <laughs> no, oh, I haven't either. I want to, but I haven't yet. <laughs> Am I the only fucker that has? <laughs> hey, don't Jeez. give me that look, okay? I, I, I stay up on my no Walsh stuff, as you well know. That's, that's, yeah, that's fair, yeah. <laughs> I know this is new, this, this is uh, what I know, yeah. Yes, the suit, this the suit. This little suit icon. <laughs> For the suit, yes, the, the suit, oh, the good old suit. Yeah, because um, the way that works is that if if you're not aware, um, which I'm I'm pretty sure you may be, um, you have to go to the Phoenix Oil Rig and you have to um repair it temporarily. You have to wear full NBC suit, and you have to have a blueprint and filament to print the suit to go to land oh. here. Okay. Um, okay. Win Winstride actually made the suit, um, but you can't wear anything when you've got that on. You've only got that, okay, makes its sense. inventory, and a shoulder slot, which apparently I've heard doesn't work. <laughs> it was a beautiful mod. It is really, really nice. That that, that that's why they changed the whole player character. <laughs> oh, for Namalsk, yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I uh I actually went to the sketch fab of the model for that suit last That's so nice. and I uh I, I clicked on the bones of it and I took his picture and sent it to uh the wind strike because you know, he made it and I'm all like I see it has good bones. <laughs> <laughs> nice bones. <laughs> but yeah, so you know Namas so Namas content update three is not long just released um to the public. Um, Sumrak posted quite a few links detailing about the update. It's you know it's been in development for a long time. The oil rig itself has been on and off being developed since 2017 by his brother, um, by Sumrak's brother. Which and there was like what over 35, 36 materials or something like that set for the oil rig, and it's fantastic, absolutely brilliant. Um, a lot of work has definitely gone into it, so you can see a couple of things there. Spoilers, by the way, for anybody in chat. Uh, um, <laughs> it's all right. Oh my god. <laughs> you haven't it. seen anything. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. oh shit, yeah, I'll, I'll focus on my face there, nobody saw it, it's fine. <laughs> Hello. So, um, but it's a, it's a really, really co cool update. Um, I Personally, I've talked about it on my Twitter a little bit. Um, and I am going to be doing another 24 hour live stream for Namosk. I don't know why yet. I have, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to like cope and find a reason to do it. Um, apart from because I can, so we'll, we'll, we'll figure something out there. But, um, but no, Namosk is an absolutely iconic map. And if anybody in chat hasn't checked it out yet, absolutely bloody should. Um, so, you know, I know it's the last one that Sumrak is doing, like the least the last major one. Um, he still said that he's going to do some like stability support essentially for when new updates of the game come out, which is great. It's always nice to see modders um, further develop their 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 projects, but not necessarily like constantly doing massive updates. It's just nice stability updates. It's <laughs> um. 
so yeah absolutely check it out if um if people haven't and and you guys should you should you should take like a couple of hours or something like that to, to give it a shot you should absolutely give it a shot please I want somebody else to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> a funny tidbit I just got to share. Um, I had a base on the outs outskirts of the ice before mm. the Phoenix uh, Eurig was added there, so that base is now next to the Eurig. <laughs> wow. Wow. Nice. So it's no longer hidden. It's no longer hidden. <laughs> well, uh, that server's getting wiped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, bloody hell. Eh, hey, fuck it all. So something else that's been going on in the community as well, which I was really, really happy to see, considering, you know, Queens of the Castle, Queens of the Castle 2, is that a lady stream team was developed by, um, by Joito, um, who made a post on Twitter saying, so I did a thing and now we have ladies, uh, the Lady Z stream team, we have all the deets in Ladies Discord on how to apply, and I'm so looking forward to having all the badass ladies in there. And it's brilliant. It's really, really awesome. We, we know we've, there's been a lot of stream teams that's come and gone, um, creating a lot of content, coming together to create events and that. But having a unified one for the women in the community is brilliant. Absolutely fantastic, and it's it's about it's about fucking time. <laughs> it's about yeah. fucking time somebody yeah. done that. True. Absolutely, because you know, as as we as we all know, you know, women in 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 game communities, you know, they get a lot of fucking flack for just being women. It's fucking ridiculous. So when they all have a, a space or whatever that they can come together to just sit down, have a laugh at the end of the day, just to have a good time, play play the game we all like to an extent. I mean, some of us like it more than others. Some of them fucking hate this game and continue to play it and mod it. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um, it's a love-hate relationship. It's, it's, it's a love-hate relationship, <laughs> yes. But, you know, it's a... so it's I'm, I'm wishing them the absolute best. I hope the stream team does really, really well. And I can't wait to see what they, what they come up with in the future. I really, really can't wait to see. Definitely have to keep our eye on it. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love, to, I'd love to, um, to get a couple of them on the show. Oh, is that an EVR storm? I'm, he I'm, I'm hearing. Oh. Uh, I, I, I hear the EVR storm. Sorry, I'm just, I'm just going back there because I. Oh wait, I thought that was just <laughs> laugh. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite, quite foreboding. Like holy shit. But um. I know G Gorman actually done some of the particle work from the mask going back to that lately. Oh, that's so nice. Good shit. Hell yes. But um, something that's... So, I think it was last week we covered as well that the, the Daisy team, they done another um, development stream. Well, development stream, sorry. A teaser stream for 119. And they finally published the video about it, um, which I'm going to put in chat for people to watch. It's a 22 minutes long video talking about um, different, obviously, teasers that they're coming out with for um, for 119, the, the Secrets of Livonia update, I think they're calling it. Um, and if you look in the chapters, they've actually covered on some of the topics. Um, any updated news on the cars? And they actually addressed spray paint making a comeback. Don't, they're not. <laughs> Uh, when when 119 is going to be released, spawn points and stuff like that. Also, them taking the piss out of Sumrat because he can't kill a fucking chicken. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well <Very> done. Nice. <laughs> At least <laughs> did kill him. Yeah, they did touch on uh, they did touch on the deforested forest areas. Yes. And they kind of made a joke about DOJ submitted a lot of. Cool <laughs> Had to, they had to decline, unfortunately, because it gave away too many spoilers. Yes, yes. Oh my god, I I thought it was oh, no. really really funny when um when when I I, I was talking to DOG about it, and it was just like that whole summit one G with like the too many trees, and it's like oh my god, it's actually fucking happening. What is going on? <laughs> He's actually uh. getting rid of the trees. <laughs> fucking hell. But I'm excited for one nineteen. Uh, I really am. What about, um, I know we've touched on it a little bit in terms of modding, but 
What what do you guys think about um, 119 just being right around the corner and waiting for quite some time for this update? Um, well, it's going to be I... exciting to be right about the release date. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shut up. <laughs> I, mean, I think, I think ex expanding Livonia is, is might finally do something for the map. Yeah. Um, but I do wonder if they will ever consider to make it free to play, because no matter how much they change to the map or do stuff for it, uh, most people won't play it or use it as to host a server because it's behind a paywall. Um, and it's not about the amount of the paywall. It's the mm -hmm. fact that it's behind the paywall. That's the major uh, problem that the map has and the major mm. reason why people haven't engaged with it. There's barely few communities out there using it. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I'm mean, super excited to see the changes, but yeah, it's yeah. something difficult. Well, that's that's the thing. Like, I, I'm, I don't like Livonia whatsoever. I, I just I can't get into it. I can't feel the rhythm like I do with like Namask or Chinaris or, or Banov or anything like that. Um... Mm. But obviously, you know, we know what DOJ is capable of. We know the kind of stuff that he's worked on in the past. And I I can't wait to see what he can do on that level on on um, Fall of Ornia. And I do have high hopes for him. I really, really do. I do kind of agree with you. It's like the should make it a part of the standalone, like, main package instead of DLC. Yep, but, exactly. Um, but I have to think about that a little, a little bit more because obviously Daisy, it does need its, it does need its funding. It does need to make sure that it keep keeps continuing to make money. And if they do decide to make that map part of the main package, in terms of DLC, what would you guys actually like to see come as DLC that isn't just fucking shitty weapon skins <laughs> or anything like that? DLCs. Mm. Like that's they... hard. To... Like, it's a hard topic to talk about because it's like, what can be a DLC for, especially DayZ? Because it's like, oh, will will it be like you know, in terms of, is it going to be like another map or something like that? It's it's very very hard to talk about. Yeah. Because like anything they put that like is actually tangible behind a DLC comes into the same well, I guess, premise as the whole map being behind a paid DLC, right? Like. Mm. Yeah. It's just like microtransactions like, and create unboxings. No, no we're not yeah, doing right? microtransactions. Like <laughs> I mean, uh, I can understand if they be put the uh, maps behind a paywall because it's their only chance to get an additional transaction mm -hmm. from uh, a player that is yeah playing DayZ. If he really wants to uh, play it on on that map, but yeah, yeah it, it, it's kind of hard. Like you you can't put anything else in this game behind a paywall, like skins, weapons, yeah, it's, it's just stuff so... like that. You all get that from from bots already. Yeah. Why you should pay Why for should that? You pay for it, yeah. Uh, and and I can't imagine that uh, they ever will create content like this for for uh, behind a paywall, basically. No. And and yeah, so their imagine. only chance is is maps, but um, that maps have to be they yeah to be like at attractive, <laughs> basically. Like yeah. yes. I could imagine people would love to play DayZ on 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 maps like Tanoa. Mm -hmm. Let's say uh, it's it would give the game a complete different feeling, but you also would have to adjust uh, the the game based on the map, mm -hmm. and what is yep. quite difficult also. Like oh, Tanoa is a complete tropical tropical map, so you would have to do stuff like Namask do maybe like give the map certain events like heat waves or something like that where the there player needs to be something there yeah it yeah just has to handle stuff stuff yeah. like that uh, have has to handle uh the weather conditions or or anything mm -hmm. it, it, it's 
quite difficult to just release a map and yeah, there we go. Just just play on it. Have to yeah. somehow yeah. adjust the game feeling to it also. And well, and that, that's, well, that's why so, yeah. Namaz is such huge uh, success because it does exactly that and and also more. It adds a storyline, a progression within all the the yeah uh, areas you you basically mm -hmm. can visit can really achieve it with one single character you you can get the the biggest ass on the server because you have like i don't know the 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 big fat vest plate from from uh how's it called that alien place i forgot the i'm not too sure <laughs> okay. you know it guys I, th I think I know what I'm about. No, in, in, in Namask, the alien place. Lantia. You... Lantia? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. That's the place <laughs> I for. for. Okay, that'll stay. <laughs> no, that's and, hard questions. Who knows mm. what you now can get there? I don't know. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's the thing. Like, add a story to the map, add some kind of really good events to the maps and and then they yeah. can good get good money with it <laughs> i well, have no problem it. with that i mean if they do introduce a new map i would definitely love to see something that's like that is different from chinaris and livonia maybe something like to know it i mean eden despite its controversy proved that there is a market for that there is can you guys stop it with the lad champs in chat? Fuck me, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, you know, as we're saying, you know, there's, 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 there is a demand for that. There is a market for a um, tropical style map. And I can already see, like, you know, with the rain, the torrential uh, downpours, a lot more, um, a lot more vibrant, a lot more effective, like more, um, it's more of a clusterfuck is the best way I can describe it. You know, the humidity, so the temperature's obviously a lot, uh, typically more higher. Um, you know, the different soundscapes and, and just different overall vibe and feel. Uh, but it's also got to have that typical, like, daisy loot. Um, that, like, the loot runs, like, you know, Chinaris is the, 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 the golden standard for how it works. Um, Livonia, obviously, it's hard to say until 119 hits. But having Tanoa have that as well would be really really awesome would be really really cool um one day one day i think we'll get another brand new map maybe in a couple of years or so that might maybe. meet that demand if not we'll just have to get a, a legitimate modder or team to actually do something <laughs> like that but we'll, we'll you see need a team for sure for that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but we'll, we'll wait and see we'll, we'll have to wait and see um Oh my fucking god. Oh, oh no. Oh dear. Oh dear. What'd you do? <laughs> the helicopters. <laughs> no one saw that on screen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a really nice cloud you got. Oh dear. <laughs> oh my fucking god. Okay. I mean. But, um. AZ, are we surprised? Uh, fair enough, yeah. But um, <laughs> one thing I want to want to quickly uh, talk about as well is um, Skill Speeder. Oh yeah. Um, Skill Speeder recently, um, he post he put a tweet out on um, uh, quite a few days ago, and his channel has finally had over fifteen million views. Uh, the guy's been uploading for. God knows how long. God knows how long. And took your time, skill speeder. He's in chat. Hello there, bud. Uh, um, but I just got to give, uh, no. um, I've got to give props to him because you know his videos are absolutely brilliant. Really, really, in they're quite informative. And he's they such are. a he's such a cool guy. He's he's absolutely lovely. Have, have you guys watched any of his um is any of his videos? 
Yes, indeed. Yeah. I have. Nice. Yes, I have. I mean, I, uh, good shit. Good shit. I'm really happy about that. Really, really, I'm happy about that. Congratulations to your skill speedy. Here's to another 15 million more. No, please. Helicopter. Fly to Lantia. <laughs> Go. Could do that, actually, yeah. That is YouTube, folks. If anyone is interested in chat of going Thank into you. Steve's Scale Speeder, he covers lots of games, but most of the, um, but the ones we really lo love, or I really love, is Daisy and the Arma ones. Absolutely. Oh, he's he's playing without auto hover. That's how you fly. <laughs> what <are> you, Steve? <laughs> Pro gamer, right there. Pro gamer. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I've, uh, Michael, I've watched so many of his instructional videos. I should have several co um, additional college credits. You, you know what? I've heard of people getting college credits for you know far less. Why don't you give it a shot? <laughs> Mood. Oh yes. But um, but no, absolutely. Congratulations to your skill speed. I'm really really proud of you, my guy. Um, keep it up. Just keep keep it up. Absolutely keep it up. Steve, that's to you. Don't fall. I'm, I'm just, I'm just waiting in anticipation on how how this is gonna work out when he if he does fly to Lindsay. <laughs> I never tried to doubt, actually, and I will probably die there. Uh, oh, yes. oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, because uh, Wait. you know, will kill you. They get all mad about it, right? That's okay. That that's actually one of the th the things I've kind of like thought about when it comes to like. You know, Red Falcons helicopters or expansion helicopters. If you have a server and you're running the Malsk, just just fly to Lanty. <laughs> like, I wonder what servers do to kind of prevent that. Oh, I bet the Malsk. I mean, uh, some rack put something in to stop it. Yeah, you what can't you actually you can't land there because it will kill you. I mean, you can't go there, but then you die. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I mean, I mean... now with the suit, you probably could. I'm not sure. Probably, yeah. But I wanna. I don't wanna spoil it or try it out. Yeah, with you. that's so fair. I just enough. wanna test out what happens now when I'm flying. <laughs> yes. Five seconds before he re almost reaches there, his rotors give out and he falls into the sea. Yes. Out of fuel and dumps down. Yeah. <laughs> um, Jacob Mango in chat. Hello there, bud. Hope you keep him well. Just said I believe Lanty is higher than the helicopter flight ceiling. That's good. Oh. But I think I got there one time. I'm not sure. <laughs> Put this theory to the test. <laughs> but, what, um... what about the car's flight ceiling? Like, even cars? Yes, <laughs> exactly. That's, that's how they fixed it. They just reduced the flight ceiling. You know, that's it. <laughs> but, oh um... And... A little bit of a controversial topic. Um, something we don't really do often on the show since it took over. Um, there are many apps and, you know, monitors can have this feature. Oh, there's Lanty right there. Oh, oh fuck it. Oh, oh my that's, God. That is big. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, wow. let's see. Let's Jesus Christ, it's so fucking big. Um, what's the thing? Oh, yes, crosshairs. So, there was a poll put up um, by... Uh, um, and he said, curious some people's opinions on the rise in use of Crosshair X, a third-party Steam application that overlays a Crosshair and uses games such as Rust, Tarkov, and DayZ. Is this considered cheating? Hmm. I voted on it. I voted on it. I said, I said no. <laughs> I, I said no on the cheating. I mean, there's way too much stuff with that you could do that like there's so, even monitor or softwares that have that integrated exactly you could yeah. tape it. i voted yes because it is technically cheating honestly though i'd rather have someone I... like use a cheese like a crosshair than use like aimbot though like but that's the thing though you're all like <laughs> yeah. you're pretty much saying oh hey i'm I... happier with someone using a cheap hack instead of an expensive hack mm. yep that's yes. exactly what it is. Yes. No, no, no. It's still it's still cheating no matter how you look at it. Because technically yeah. it's not in the base game and people purposely go through and disable it. It's not like a 
It's not like something the developers chose to do. Servers purposely choose to remove it. Mm -hmm. um, and I know somebody said, well, if everyone else is doing it, I guess it isn't. That's not how cheating works. No, absolutely not. Yep. Oh, you were able to. Wow. You should you should never not uh, spare my screen. I'm just going to zoom in. <laughs> I'm just gonna see just don't I'm share just... it i'm gonna full but screen it was it. interesting because <laughs> whole but we whole should we, we should do something against it <laughs> holy shit uh, you it's have quite more that's why you're still alive but normally you oh die. yeah 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 you're right i probably have got more than sounds like glantia needs some anti-aircraft protection yes <clears throat> invisible walls <clears throat> yeah no, I don't have God mode. You don't? Oh, no, I have. <laughs> okay. Never mind. Instantly I'm... fucking dead. <laughs> oh, okay, yep. now it hurts. Oh, God, now it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead. Yeah. Uh oh. Oh, dear. So that's what happens when you go win without a suit. <laughs> you starve to death. <laughs> you stopped. Okay, it's, it's technically correct because you had no food, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, oh, God. See, uh, no, back to topic. As you yes, can basically. see here, chat, <laughs> he died. <laughs> but yeah, go on, Steve, go on. My... Basically, I would consider it. Yeah. Right, so. okay. <laughs> Fair okay, enough. Okay, that comment is funny. It's definitely yeah. cheating, but what what is up with the middle-aged men and young secretary? <laughs> cheating, but then it's PC gaming, like middle-aged men and young young secretaries. There's always going to be cheating. <laughs> They're called executive <laughs> in assistants now, Michael. Yeah. Okay, let's not go down that too far. <laughs> I mean, it, it's cheating, and it's probably the worst way of cheating, because it's something that, sadly, server hosters cannot control. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, it's the same thing as uh, the other thing that is commonly used, which is NVIDIA and Spectre to basically alter the textures and how the mm. game renders to, to gain an advantage in PvP. Um, it's the reason that, why, yeah, it's the reason why yeah. a lot of servers are basically modding the game to delete the grass from the ground to try to level, basically balance the PvP against the people oh. using those type of filters. Uh, to see more at, at night or to see clear at day, basically, because if you see someone prone, it's just proning there and there's no grass in, in, in the ground. So, yeah, it, it's the worst uh, kind of cheating. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. I guess I never it's really considered... Because obviously I voted no, it's, it's, it's not cheating, but I guess I never really considered you guys' viewpoints. Yeah, it's hmm. it's crazy, like like you said, but it's understandable too, I mm. think, because it, it's I think it goes straight into this psychology aspect of, of this mm. whole thing of playing and, and gaming in general, because in this game the stakes usually are so high because you're gonna lose everything that you've done if you if you die, mm -hmm. then that people basically that do not handle the concept try to gain an advantage to cheat on it, right? Uh, yeah, I think it's, I mean, it comes from that, uh, from that side of thing. Sure. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, to Andrew Boydy's thing, it's not an official Steam mod. It's a third party one that you can download. It's no different than the ones you can get from other places. It's just mm -hmm. on the Steam store. As yeah, and a... not even that, some monitors, some PC monitors include have the it. feature to have yeah. a crosser yeah. in, embedded on, on the own software, right? I mean, I've seen people do it with rubber bands. I, <laughs> I, I, I still remember back in the Modern Warfare 2 days where people would like get like a, a marker and just put a little dot right in the middle of the TV screens. Yeah. Bloody hell, how yeah. far we've we come. <laughs> yeah, if you're playing co uh, split screen and they did that, you'd be like, you're cheating. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Oh god, it's um, um, a fairly interesting topic. Fairly interesting. 
I miss I miss split screen. I miss split screen in games. Um, fuck it all. But no, very very interesting viewpoints. I think I'll have to kind of. I think I'll have to think about it and reevaluate my stance on it. Yeah. You have you have. Well, a the good friend. thing is, is the poll <laughs> did state that it was sixty one percent said yes, it was cheating. That was hmm. interesting to see that forty plus forty percent said no. But then it was interesting listening to everybody else's conversation. And one server owner even said, I think it was Sauerkraut, uh, that he actually know, has ways of detecting it and kicking people off. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of interesting. I'd, I'd love to hear more about that. Definitely. But with that, we are finally at the end of tonight's show. Easily one of the longest ones we've done in really really informative again i really want to thank everybody from the expansion team for coming along you know steve jose and um liquid you've been absolutely amazing for coming on at the show i really really do appreciate Thanks. it um a lot. you know I, I know you guys you know you, you're busy people and you know we'll try to try to work out a time you know move to saturday and now back to friday so I really do appreciate it. And, you know, Lieutenant Master, if you're still watching, you know, it's a shame you couldn't come on the show, but wishing the absolute best for you, my guy. Much love to you. Um, hopefully one day we can get you on. One day, please, next time. <laughs> Fingers crossed. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, so typically we like to do a spotlight. He is here, Boydy. We like to do a spotlight. Um for um for the show and we typically go with the guests and then the host so um uh so all, all you guys what has kind of like been your spot like what kind of stuff have you seen in the community that's kind of made you go like huh that's pretty cool hmm like hard recently or just, just in general it, it can be recently it can be in general um the uh, I think it was the one and Unquepas, the guys that ported the original Arma Two map mm -hmm. um, to Daisy, that basically was a shot straight to my heart. So that was amazing to see, and I I have it on my test server all the time now because I wanted to do that, and that was <laughs> absolutely brilliant. Finally, someone did it, like finally. So yeah, absolutely. kudos that, to them. That is good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of, I kind of played on it a little bit, and it was completely weird. <laughs> I was like, "What the fuck? I'm not used to this." <laughs> it was, it was right home for me. So yeah, it was amazing to see. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. What about, um, what about the rest of you, um, Liquid and? You know, what was the... For me, actually, um, we had touched on this briefly, uh, shortly, um, in the uh, console modding or console tweaking committee. Mm -hmm. The the, the sheer creativity that they come up with to achieve certain stuff. For example, I remember when they added um, snow using garden plot holograms yes. to the game. I was fascinated by that. This is this was something that really uh, I thought was cool. Yeah. No, it, it it was really ingenious, and whoever came up with the idea, and it worked out pretty decently, all things considered. Oh, it was pretty, pretty cool. Decently, yeah. So yeah, I mean, like you said, when you got limitations, you got to figure something yeah. out, I suppose. <laughs> and uh, what about yourself, uh, Jose? I mean, I already said, Steve, it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to give again a shout out to uh, Fujito, um, for opening that Lady Daisy stream team it's it's quite interesting uh to see how how this will go and i'm i'm quite fascinated that um the daisy community actually is is quite the first community uh i see that has some kind of of uh, yeah a lady group basically uh for for a certain game and it's it, it's quite cool like all that queen of the castle event also got um created by uh 
Sorry, Ariana. Correct. Yes. And uh, I, I was quite into it, and it was really cool to watch. Uh, and 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 our girls are just nuts and. Keep an eye out of that, guys, because they they probably will someday overestimate you and be better. No, just just uh, it, it's quite cool what they're doing. It's it and is I, really I, cool, absolutely. I'm simping for them. <laughs> Uh, I have to quickly interject, Steve. What is happening with the Daisy Expansion Patreon? Oh, it's quite, quite. I mean, we we still have some some uh, supporters, but it's get getting quite. Uh, yeah. Uh, Are you let's not? say unused. Well, what we need, if get anyone in. has any ideas you guys to um, you know, add stretch goals or anything like that, um, we need to pump that because it's a great way to support Daisy Expansion. I've been, we've been doing it, the 87.8 Survivor FM family, for ages now, but yeah, need to uh, start promoting that. Absolutely. You couldn't agree more. Um, Steve, do you have the link to your Patreon? I'd love to put it back in the chat again. Yeah, sure. Get it. Cool. Support these guys because honestly, when it, when it comes down to the modding and the big project, the expansion team absolutely do deserve it. Like you know, to be perfectly honest, um, you guys have come a f long way, and where other people would have quit, you just simply haven't. So keep pumping out the content. You know, keep working on it. And again, really looking forward to what you've got in the future. I really, really am. Go. Oh. That's a nice Patreon page, not gonna lie, holy shit. <laughs> uh, uh, we, we probably should give it some love uh, sometime because it has still some outdated pictures and we could yeah. probably preview some more... Uh, give it some yeah. love. Give, give it, better, you know, better images, yeah, true. G give it some life, give it some love and, you know... Just, just push it out a little bit more. And you, you never, you never know what you'll, um, you never know what will happen. So yeah, we my shit. very good shit. I'll, I'll have a chat with you, Steve. I know I've um uh, been meaning to, but I've got some ideas for you uh, to start engaging with people more on there because you know I've even been a bit slack with the um eighty seven eight Patreon, um, and the more you engage the more people feel like it's worthwhile them supporting the program in an ongoing uh, format. And it gives you guys a little bit more financial security, knowing how many patrons you've got, how much you've got coming in, and the way you can plan for projects in the future. Because I know you do still get donations, which is awesome, uh, but as we talk about time and time again here, it costs money, doesn't it, Dumb and Lad? Oh, God, yeah. It does. It does cost money, but... Uh, yep. So appreciate it, and yeah. So keep it up, man. Just, just do it. Just do it. Go. On. Why not? <laughs> but um, but before obviously we finish up the show, lemons dump. What are your spotlights for this week? Um, I would say mine's a twofer. So the first person is it's Mike Daughtry. Yes. Uh, he made a really cool uh, Yellow King video, just kind of like showing off all the Yellow King stuff. And uh, the set, and I thought that was really cool. I really enjoyed it. But one of the cool things, other the twofer guy, is a uh, Scotty. Not necessarily Scotty, like you know his other accomplishments, but the fact that he was willing to actually not only comment in our Discord about it, but also to retweet it and even like imagine how much he loves it. Mm -hmm. Um. I just think that, like, it's cool that Mike uh, Doshery made something well enough to impress Scotty, but the fact it impressed Scotty enough that Scotty was willing to go, hey, I actually want people to know about this guy and what he did. That's my thing. And that's it. And that's the main thing. So, funny funny thing about that tweet, too, to add on to that. I, I sent this to the lad, but I had, um, I had liked his tweet 
during the uh, stream, and he <laughs> he reached out to me directly on Twitter <laughs> to step me back and set me straight and to stop um, delay down the live on stream. So, <laughs> yep. Heart goes uh, out to him though. Absolutely amazing guy though. You know. So I'm just I'm just going to get the oh. the post. Let's let's see if I can find it. Um, that Mike posted. I can't seem to find it. I don't know where it's gone. There we go. Got the YouTube link. I want to post this in chat. Um, I want people to watch this because it was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Give it. Give him some love. Give him some attention because he absolutely deserves it for that video. It was really great. Um, Lemons, what's your spotlight, my guy? My spotlight was going to be Scotty for that reason. Because, <laughs> you know, ah, fuck you, I did. Homies, yep. Um, homies keeping me in check, you know, I, I do appreciate it. <laughs> what happens when you don't show your face? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That'll be my bloody spotlight uh, when you show your face eventually. <laughs> eventually, yep. But no, I guess, um, honestly, the expansion team, you know, mm -hmm. it's just. It's been such an inspiration, especially the stuff like um, what DOJ they I can't even, what DOJ did for the map <laughs> is just it was amazing to see that stuff. And honestly, that was one of the big things that inspired me to do my stuff with um, the console community for Zagoria. So, mm -hmm. um, they're always a big inspiration to so many people, and it's always going to be a lasting thing that will follow through for years to come. And just my heart goes out to you guys for all the work you have done and keep doing. So, good job. Wow, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there goes my fucking spotlight. <laughs> <laughs> Dickhead. <laughs> no, but I'll um play it low. <laughs> fucking a hundred oh my god, bloody Jesus Christ. So oh god, what's my spotlight now? I don't I don't know. No. Um Community. my sp no, shut the fuck up. <laughs> my my spotlight is actually been to the stream teams. Um, that have been doing their th doing their thing quite a lot lately. Um, you know, there's been so many people. You know, Happy Bombs, Ariana, who and um, you know, Armor Zed and whatnot, who's come together uh, and cracks as well with the life servers. I believe that they've done a stream snipe event just recently, last weekend, I think. Um, and it was successful. And all these people that the they come up with these ideas for different events to get the community engaged and watch and just having a good time. And props to them, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm really, really happy that people are doing something like that, and I hope they keep going. I really, really do. Fingers, uh, fingers crossed that it keeps going well for them. And uh, can't wait to see what, what, uh, what comes in the future. And with that, I don't think there's anything else, as far as I'm aware. Is there anything else, Dom Lemons? I don't know. <laughs> no, I, no, I don't think there is anything. I think I think we're good to go. With that, that is the end of episode one nineteen. Shame we didn't have update one nineteen come out of this episode, but there you go. <laughs> Fate did not will it. <laughs> but thank you again, uh, everybody, for coming on the show. I really do appreciate your time for coming on talking about expansion. It was so fascinating to hear all about it. Thank you so much. And with that, uh, the, what? <laughs> as always, as always, and anytime you want to come back on the show, if you've got anything more you want to showcase, especially after 119 hits, feel free to hit me up, be able to get you back on. No problem at all. Yeah. Right. Take care, everyone. Much love to you all, and have a good weekend. Same. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 And with that, it's the end of the episode. And my voice cracked. <laughs> but, oh my god, that episode was really, really awesome. I really do appreciate Steve, Liquid, and Jose for coming on. I really, really do appreciate it. Everybody in chat, you've been absolutely fantastic with questions. Um, I'm sorry if I did miss any earlier on in the stream. I know people are excited having the team on. Um, really, really cool. Hello, Scotty. Hello. Hope you keep on well, mate. Hope you're gonna have a good weekend. Really do appreciate you coming on along in the stream as well. Um, oh my god! But yes, it's been a it's been a long week. 
I'm glad it's the weekend. Um, I know we're going to be um, getting another guest on next week, Cobra. Um, Boydie talked to me about him. I've watched a couple of his videos and really, really entertaining. Had a quick chat with him earlier on this week. He'll be coming on to the show next Friday, same time. Um, he is a YouTuber. Again, his content is really, really interesting. Plays on vanilla servers mainly. And, you know, I f he's a really interesting guy. He's really, really cool to talk to. And I can't wait to... Um, to have him on the show and talk to uh, and talk all about DayZ, especially if 119 is right around the corner. <laughs> Scotty, do you know do you, do you know anything? Is it, you know? <laughs> but um, no, but seriously, can't wait to have him on. And again, thank you so much to the team. I really, really do appreciate it. Um, you know, they the, were the absolutely fantastic for coming on, and spend the time to to talk with us. And I want to you know want to thank Dump um, for coming on as well. He's he was sick. Bless his heart. Oh, like I've, I felt really sorry for him. I really, really did. But you know, he he, he soldiered on. He came on, and I hope he feels better soon. I really do. Um, but yes. So with that, thank you again so much for coming along. I really do appreciate it. Same time next week, next Friday, nine o'clock, as always, for episode one twenty of the Daisy Podcast. One. Uh, before I do finish, though, just a quick little message. Episode 118 will be going up tonight. Um, we are slowly trying to catch up on all the old VODs. Um, 118, I believe, is ready to go. So once I get something to eat, um, just wait a couple of hours and 118 uh, will be up. Okay? Awesome. Right, everyone, much love to you. Take care. And bye-bye for now. Have a good night.